Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Production skills is smooth as butter. What's that, man? Damn, boy, that boy hit that button on time, boy. You understand me? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners your boy Tiz, and I'm along with. It's the Padawan. I'm pissed off. Today was horrible. But I'm here. It's the other third. And I'm along with it. Oh, yeah. It's your boy facing the place. I ain't running no damn races. Oh, shit. I'm still in this place. What's going on now? Hey. Shit. How y'all be this week, baby? I can't complain, man. Feeling good. Feeling good. Shit. Just money. Just feeling good, man. I'm glad things are going well. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling good. I'm glad glad you're back on track and see you with a big grin on your face. That always makes me have a bro. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Right on, right on. What's going on with you, Pat? How you doing this week? Well, uh, you just saved me from um, by jumping my car. Uh, today's Today's been a Monday. It's definitely a Monday. Somebody loves a Monday. Not whoa, me, whoa, nigga. Whoa. <laughs> um, well, shit. Uh, I'm kind of feeling like face tonight. Uh, I feel really good. Uh, my hip and my hamstring and my groin and my quad all on the same leg. I'm pretty sure are all pulled or strained. However. The act I did to do it was very fun. I I did a dance cipher on Friday night, and you know I ain't did one of them since I was like twenty three. You mean Friday or Saturday? Friday night. It was Friday night. Saturday. Saturday night. Saturday. Saturday night. Saturday. Night. Saturday. Night. Saturday night. My bad. Yeah, it was Saturday night. Um, good to know I still have some moves. Um, no, some no. some of my moves I need to throw them bitches out and mm-hmm. never pick them back up. Um, because uh, my body just don't do that no more. Mm-hmm. But. I would say the ones that I like to do the most are still there. So, yeah. And then, uh, you know, had a great weekend afterwards. Um, yeah. I feel good. Yeah, did, 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 did. yeah. And we up in here. Um, man, <laughs> this is episode 119. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time. I want to check the why everybody is kind of at their highest energy and just kind of break us right off into the conversation. This is something I wanted to try this week. Instead of getting off into our actual like main topic that we actually, you know, planned and whatnot, figured I'd just throw out an icebreaker topic just to kind of get our our brains going, get get the conversation kind of flowing. And it's just something that was fresh on my brain today uh, from a video I watched. So I was watching uh video on Comedy Hype today, and they had uh, I guess, basically, I didn't realize this, but Chris Rock is facing facing some backlash from his uh, his comedy special that he just dropped, uh, Selective Outrage, and uh, I guess black women are saying that he attacked black women when he went at Jada and called her a bitch, and um, kind of spoke his truth on whatever, you know, the situation between him and her and Will was from the Oscars and all that. Um, it was an interesting angle, um, but basically, I guess because he's calling her a bitch and he's coming at her kind of heavy in the special, they're saying that he's attacking black women. Um, so I just wanted to throw my tears take out there and then kind of get y'all thoughts on this specific Chris Rock situation, obviously, and you know my tears take in general as well. So I feel like yes, black women do get attacked a lot. Um, I won't say it's more or less than any other marginalized group. I think it's just in a very unique way. Like I, I feel like each different little, little intersectionality or cross section of people kind of have their own unique 
struggles that they deal with that aren't necessarily better or worse than anybody else is just kind of unique. I think black people as a whole have a larger struggle that is very kind of, you know, very special. But outside of that, I think most struggles that people go through are kind of just, you know, unique to them and their effect. But I think that black women, though they get attacked, they're not attacked by the people they often blame for the attack. Um, I feel like there's a rise. So my test take is I feel like there's a rise in like black women having backlash to anything where somebody disagrees, argues back with, has a negative <laughs> opinion of any black woman and they make it about all black women as if you can't just dislike a specific black woman. Um, I heard, uh, and, and you know, my test take, you know, is obviously me, but I, I kind of heard it echoed a little bit in Capone, uh, the comedian Capone on comedy. How he he kind of said it too, like you know, people have heard that Jada's a bitch before. Like this is not a new industry rhetoric like this kind of one of them things like bill cosby dropping all spanish flying people drinks back in the day like it's kind of just go it's going around like monique being difficult it's, it's going around it's just kind of this situation may have brought it to like but w when is it okay to just call a woman period or a black woman in specific what she is acting like like when is it oh ever okay like and then i stop there and i just throw it out to the and let y'all just go uh, yeah, you go ahead. No, nah, you go ahead, Pat. You, oh, ahead. Right. you go ahead, brother. Good, because I'm pissed off today. It's Monday. I'm about to drink this, and then I'm about to just say some shit that will probably give me some backlash, because fuck y'all. Do your damn thing, brother. I'm sick of fucking human. I'm sick of fucking people. Um... To answer your question, Tiz, it's never a time that you can actually say that because every time you say something or have some type of a critique, there will be a woman somewhere in the, in the, in the internet saying that you're going against black women or women in general. So what I say is you might as well just say it anyway because no matter what you do, somebody's not going to like it. So fuck them. Fuck them. And I and I personally just think it's just people is is fake. It they're proving his point. It's fake outrage. Y'all just doing this shit so you can get clicks. You're just doing this shit because you're bored. You don't got shit else to talk about. You don't got shit else to write about. You don't got nothing else you can put on your blog. Chris Rock is the next is 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 the next popping thing. It has been the popping thing since last year. We've been waiting for it. We already knew. We've been knowing for a year. He's going to talk shit about the bitch. And we knew for a year he was going to talk shit about Will Smith. And really, to tell you the truth, I really can't say he has it. Uh, he's in the wrong for it. I get slapped in the face and, and your bitch laugh at me while you slap me in the face. I'm going to joke. To, I'm probably going to do worse than Chris Rock. I'm not going to just joke. I'm not going to wait a year and joke about it. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to do something violent. Because you slapped me in the face in front of a million people and shit. But um, the least you can allow him to do is talk shit. That is his job. That is his profession. Let him talk shit. Because he's pissed off and he's been pissed off. So let him talk shit. Y'all talk shit when y'all get pissed off. So shut the fuck up and let the man talk shit. That's what he's paid to do. I might say I'm not saying I agree with him. I ain't saying I disagree with them, but I'm saying, hey, if somebody slapped me in the face in front of a million people, I'm going to talk as much shit as you can. I don't give a fuck if anybody get mad about it. I hope you get mad. Get the fuck out of my face. Shut the fuck up and find something else to get mad about. You ever get big enough to do a part of the live where we in like a theater or something? I'm going to make it clear. Run up on me. You ain't getting no goddamn special. You're going to get that special right then and there. Mm hmm. And I ain't saying shit. Mm hmm. Might get a 38 spec. Let me when I get you. <laughs> Ace, did you want to sound off on this before I say? Oh, yeah. Something? See, my first thing is anytime someone says something about um, a black woman, 
you you find a, a, a small minority of people coming to or making an uproar about it and trying to equate one statement about one woman's action and trying to make it an umbrella statement about a whole sect of people. When in all actuality, that person's comment matched rightfully to that woman's actions. And they were not talking about the all women. But for some reason, it's only in the time of critique that this type of mindset comes. Because in any other thing, you hear all women are not alike. All women are the same. But when it's a critique, then all women are the same. All women are alike. No, it's not. Stay in your lane. Mind your business. If someone's speaking on all, they will reference all. And then you can take up whatever actions or whatever front you want to take up to. If Jada has a problem, she's the only one that has the right to speak on it. Because it was a comment towards her. Towards her. Mm -hmm. All these other women who have a problem with it, it's just like the rest of society now. When someone has a problem with something that ain't got nothing to do with them, they want to make an uproar about it. When the person who is the comment about or the thing is about, they really could give two shits less. <laughs> Y'all out here don't have no business of your own to mind, so you want to mind Jayla's business. She don't give a fuck. They put the shit in the media for everyone else to care about. But I can guarantee this. Turn a blind eye to it. They won't put it in the media no more. Y'all fall for the bullshit every goddamn time. And then y'all want to, oh, he's doing this. He's doing that. No, nah, motherfucker. He's expressing how he feels about the situation that he was actually in. That he was actually in. It, and if she's a strong black woman, why do y'all got to defend her every single time? Bingo. Like, aren't you insulting her because you want to defend her? She's a strong black woman, according to you. She don't need y'all to come to her defense. At all. She's not a victim. She's not a damsel in distress. Ain't that what y'all said? I'm, I'm going to agree with everything y'all said. And I'm going to separate myself on this. I don't want to attack this committee. But myself, I want to make sure it's clear that these are his words. The thoughts expressed in the next sentence or two are completely those of his. They do not express the full views of the partner, nor should they be attached to any other partner other than his. Hey, strong black women, bitches. Now you got me there. Strong black women as whole. You got me there too. Guess what? Though? I concur. This is the, the funny part. Some Indian dudes is bitches. Some Chinese dudes is hoes. Some of them Indian bitches at the club Some the other day. Black men is bitches. <laughs> like, what we talking about here? Like words got meaning, and we gonna stop doing this bullshit. Like I'm done playing semantics. I'm done doing the the, the PC game. I ain't got no brand to protect. I ain't got shit. look. My this pronouns is, this is, is he. Shit. This and is him. what it is, yo. Shit is what it is. I ain't about to keep playing with this shit because this shit pissing me off. Like, it's getting to a point where you can't say nothing real because people going to come with some figurative ass fake look, ass people. Look, figurative language is for poetry, bitch. Save that shit for, the, for your rhymes and your goddamn your bars and shit, nigga. Hit me with a punchline with that shit. Fake ass bitch. But if we having a real conversation Bad. about everyday life, nigga, we going to deal with facts. Figures and shit that's actually tangible and can be proven. I ain't about to play with this shit. Words have meaning. We're done with this semantic bullshit where you done added 13 meanings to a word that don't it. No. Unless it's a new word, it can't have any meaning. We already got enough meaning. Some words got fucking seven fucking meanings as it is. I ain't about to learn no new meanings to no new word. That's really what it is. Let's put it there. I ain't learning nothing though. So guess what? You gonna get called what the fuck you need. If you's a bitch, you's a bitch. If you's a hoe, you's a hoe. If you's a goddamn slut, you's a slut. And I ain't relegate that to no sex, no gender, no race, no creed, no religion. I'm gonna call you what you is based off the human you act like when I meet your ass. 
With your bitch ass. Whatever the fuck you do is what you is. With your bitch ass. Use a bum bitch, use a bum bitch, and I don't care if you's a six foot eight <laughs> nigga or a five foot two bitch. Use a goddamn bitch, use a bum bitch, whoever you is. And if that label applies to you, then fit that shit. I have to do this shit over, over again every goddamn week. It's a new fucking story or some shit. We supposed to got man, that man ain't say shit about black women. He talked about a black, black woman. woman. That's between him and her. Whatever they got going on, that's between them. Matter that's fact, some personal shit. That ain't got nothing to do with no race of people. Or I got no group of nobody. He ain't saying, hey, these black women are this. He said, Jada, you put a name on that shit. That's you. I got a I got a question. Fuck out of here, man. I got a question. Why y'all always going against the black man? When he got something to say or critique hey, he got to man. say. We ain't even about to do that. Because if you get into that, then what happens is that I'm gonna tell you what that's mm-hmm. before you even go down that road. If you mention that a black man go through anything, then they become oh the black man don't stick up for the black woman. Oh, oh right. Lord, the black oh, man. Oh, well, hey, you know man. what? Who's well, sticking well, up? Well, this, us? Well, this was up. Fuck this that. Was up. I'm about to this say that up. shit now. Y'all don't do shit I'm gonna for the black man. Real for you. I'm gonna be real with you. When's the last time you done shit for me? The only black woman that has true. Stuck up for me in life is the one that same here. And when I say that, you know my mama pissed and, off at my ass right now. One more that's dead, but she gone, and that's my grandmother. <coughs> like, well, I got two mothers, actually, so I'll say three. I mean, let me. Just, How many but, times but they have all I heard women that see. raised me? It ain't like it's no new women in the world that's taking care of me or like out here sticking their neck out. To make sure that I have less of a struggle at work. No, I'm going to work facing the same fucking racism and bullshit. And then I got to tiptoe around every fucking woman I meet because now it's 13 goddamn me twos. If you even look in the direction, and I don't even want these bitches. I'm just fucking working. <laughs> but bitch, if you buy a box and I go grab the box, then damn it, what the fuck am I supposed to look at? Man, I ain't got time for this. Hey, look, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tell y'all this, man. I'm at the point now, yo, where I'm getting mad. And I understand now where, like, a lot of the, like, agree. That's the sad part. I don't even agree with a lot of these fringe motherfuckers in the red pill and all them weird-ass communities that be like, oh, I hate women. No, no I ain't one of them. <clears throat> Fucking love one. I was raised by a black woman. A black woman had my child. Black woman raised me all my life. Like, I'm ve- I-, I love black women will defend them to the death of me. But what we ain't about to do is keep adding on new terms and adding on new names and adding on new means. Look, words mean what the fuck they mean. And if you use what that word means, then that's what you use is. And I, I, whoever you use is, then that's you in the words of Soldier Boy. That's you. I don't care who you is. Whether you the nigga, bitch, or a uh, 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 kumquat, a goddamn pumpkin. I don't give a fuck. You, you, you bitch, you. I'm, I'm, ah! If you have perpetuated the phrase, niggas ain't shit, and I've been hearing that shit for damn near all 39 years of my life. Let me tell you this. If you, if you say that to you know a person over shit? and over no, and over this, again. This. Watch how dumb that shit sound, though. Watch this, my dude. <clears throat> niggas ain't shit. No duh, bitch. It's a nigga. Why would you expect a nigga to be shit? It's a nigga. You didn't say men ain't shit. Wow. When you say men ain't shit, that's when you gonna piss me the fuck off. Because what you ain't gonna do is they have also said actually <clears throat> being men. They have also but said a nigga that. ain't shit. Why would you expect a nigga to a nigga ain't shit? A bitch ain't shit. A slut ain't shit. A a a, a, a trick ain't shit. A simp wow. ain't shit. Like we can throw all these negative terms and yeah, Humans they ain't shit. Ain't That's shit. why they have negative connotations Humans. on the motherfucking name. Humans ain't shit. We ain't about to do this shit, yo. I'm sick of it, yo. Like every week we have a, a motherfucking story where somebody has talked about mm. some dumb shit. And I brought this story, but <clears> I ain't even bring I ain't even think about this angle before we got here. But now we here. And I'm pissed off and I'm sick of doing this shit every week. Look. If if you tell somebody in their face they ain't shit. 
yeah. all their life. On, and then man. you ask them Come to on. protect you. Come Why on, the man. hell do you think that they're going to do put but their whole the heart thing. into protecting you? Even thing. though we do. Oh, That's the God. thing. We do. Yeah, but y'all don't y'all don't defend us on that. You know what? Y'all do not defend you us on that. You know Every happened. fucking time. This is the problem. You're entitled. I got it. I entitled got it. to shit. We're gonna take this shit. <clears throat> Watch me break this shit down to a biblical. Black men have been practicing agape love for the black women. Now, what the, the problem is, is that we're men, but we're very pragmatic. We're going to treat you like you act. Every black queen has been treated like a black queen. But you know what the problem is? The fucking black queens keep fucking picking niggas. And then the black men fucking around stumble up on you and now you done got tarnished by these niggas and now we supposed to carry that baggage. Bitch, my back hurt. And then... Because I work for real. Then you so fucking corrupted by being Can't around niggas thinking that niggas is the oh, best thing for it. That when a regular, when a, 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 I say a black king comes around that just has his shit together. If a, a, a black man comes around to have his shit together, no, not into some shit. you can't shit. have your shit together. Pat, you got to be in the top 10%. Because if you ain't that, you won't even get respected by a black woman. That's where we <clears> are now, though. But when we talk about that, it get quiet. Black women get defensive. You start getting cussed out. You start getting called all types of all types of misogynist and, and all of these other labels that then make the conversation switch to something that ain't got nothing to do with what you're talking about. But when I say this, I mean this. The problem at the root of it all is black women do not respect black men. That's it. They respect money. Mm-hmm. And any bitch ass nigga in the top 10% that they can idolize, which is why the average black man, you catch the average black dude that's a plumber, he out here with some woman that's either cheating on him or is putting him through hell. Yet he's the, the nigga that's the one. He's the one that's out here working hard every day, bringing the check home, taking care of the kids, making sure you good. Making sure he got it. you call him at the drop of a dime. That motherfucker is there in 30 seconds. Yet you nag the fuck out of him when he get home, but you go to work and play goddamn Mamie for Massa at the at the job and mm -hmm. do whatever he tell you to do quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes, <clears throat> just in my experience, just to be but you will curse this nigga out and he forget the trash, but forget about the fact. Of the 10 to 15 things he did that day that made your day easy. But you're going to fuss about the one thing that annoyed you. But Thank that's you. where we at with it. But we don't want to talk about that because when we talk about that, then it becomes, well, black men cheat. Well, well, look, you ain't talking about the average black man. Because when we talk about the statistics, then they get pissed about that wait, too. Wait, 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 then let's... you get mad because, no, it's really black women that's divorcing black men. It's really black men that are stepping up to be the fathers. It's really black men that are stepping up to be the husbands. It's All really right. black men that are being faithful. It's really black men that are sitting <clears> there <throat> trying to set up families. What's happening is the modern black woman want to goddamn wear lashes, get BBLs, and go to the goddamn club at 35 instead of fucking chilling out and hanging out with the dude that actually would stay at home with them. So then you get a nigga uh, man, let me stop. Go ahead. Keep talking. Uh, well, since since they brought <laughs> up cheating, I, I let's let's up. let's let me, since you brought up cheating, I can talk this shit. have y'all ever asked why he shit. cheated? Yo, when yo. when black man cheat, did you ask why he cheated? Let me be clear, all men. With because goddamn it, let let me let me get all right. All men to cheat except for men that are actually able to be faithful. And when I say that, when I say all men, I mean all races. Like, we ain't about to put that on a white man, no black man, no Chinese man, no nothing. It's just men in general. If you deal with a nigga that's going to cheat, then that's what he's going to do. If you deal with a nigga that's going to be faithful, that's what he's going to do. If you deal with a nigga that's going to punch you in the face, that's what he's going to do. If you deal with a nigga that's going to treat you like a queen, that's what he's going to do. Like, men are the men that they are, just like women are the women they are. And we got to stop, like, broad stroking this shit. Now, there are some broad strokes. Men are more logical just because of the hormones that course through our veins that are different than the woman. But we're going to be more logical as opposed to a woman that's going to be more in touch with their emotions. 
those are different superpowers that each, each gender get, and God bless us for having them because they make us very balanced and help each other. You feel me? But when we talk about the basis of a relationship, we talk about who cheats and what. Women cheat. A Men lot. cheat. <clears throat> Trans cheat. Gay cheat. Women cheat. Lesbian cheat. More efficiently. Uh, uh, dogs cheat. Cats cheat. Uh, uh, fish cheat. God damn it. What the fuck? What are we talking about here? Animals cheat. Let, hold up. Let me interject something real quick. Has the option to have more than one partner, then that species does cheat. What we're talking about here is selective. Automated, baby. Like we're talking about selective reasoning. I choose not to cheat, so that makes me a good man as opposed to the next man. But what you ain't gonna do is call me a bad man because the last man cheated on you, and I'm sitting here being faithful, and I gotta deal with your baggage. Well, what the problem is, is people don't want to actually treat people like a different person. And when we broad stroke, if we go broad stroke, let's broad stroke in the actual statistics. Let's look at statistics up. When we go to that, then women get mad because a lot of them shit skew in a very negative light on them. And then we get called misogynistic because we're fucking logical. And I ain't about to sit here and keep dealing with how people feel. I don't give a fuck how you feel. That's his fact. They don't give a fuck how you feel. Tomorrow, the sky will be blue as a to most people, unless you are colorblind or have some type of visual di discrepancy. That's what it's going to be. It's going to look blue to you, bitch. Face, face has something. If it's cloudy, it's going to look great to you, bitch. Face, you had a point, though. Shit, yo. I don't even remember now. Just let this thing keep going. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. And when I say bitch, I mean it was bitch something to do with that cheating. applies to you. That don't got no gender on it. I promise you. Because I will call a 300 pound gorilla a bitch the same way I would call a 300 pound dude a bitch. The same way I would call a 300 pound woman a bitch. If you a bitch, you a bitch. And I'm sick of calling shit shit that it ain't. Shit is what it fucking is. We're going to call it what it is. I'm the battle war. We going to deal with it. I'm sick of this shit, y'all. Uh, we can call this shit is words, me words have me. That's going to be the name of this episode. Words have me. And, and I know this was my icebreaker. And I didn't expect to go here. But I'm here. And uh, we ain't about to keep doing this shit every week. That's what we ain't about to do. Because I already know the topics that's coming up. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this. We're going we gonna to name shit for what it is. I can tell you this. What Tiz ain't about to do is sit here for another motherfucking year and give y'all some fake ass goddamn rhetoric that sound good. I'm, I'm going to look. All right. The first years we were, I was, I know for, for, for sure I was very PC because I was just getting into it. But as, as we move forward in our growth, man, fuck that shit. Fuck you if you don't like what I'm saying. Unsubscribe. Suck my. Oh, uh, Feel free to hit the unlike button too, because either way, we going it's it's that means we get some kind of reaction. Like I don't care no more, yo. I'm so over this, and I mean that when I say unsubscribe, I mean if you know me in real life, bitch, unsubscribe to my friendship, my friendship, my, my co-workership, my uh family ship. My uh, whatever you don't like what I'm saying, suck my and I mean that. And on that, toe, and a corn and a bunion, bitch. Ooh. and I mean, bitch, whoever it applies to every time, and I mean, words for what they mean. We ain't about to do this shit no more, god damn it. I mean that shit when we about to do it anymore. I swear to God. Nate, yo, I swear to God. And stop I'm creating terms. To for the rest of my life, yo. I ain't about to do this shit no stop more. Stop fucking creating terms. If you see me in the street, say some bullshit, I'm going to call you out. Say the words with what they mean. If you say a word, it better mean what you think it means. Don't you goddamn come to me with no fucking bullshit. No, we are not about to conversate. I ain't conversating with nobody. So I'm going to tell you that now. You don't come to me with no... Hey, hey, let's conversate. No, that's bitch. A dictionary now. Faith, that's, no! that's a real word now. Out of appeasing dummy. What'd you say? So sick of that's a real word now. 
What is? Conversate. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, face. I said that shit a long time ago. <laughs> they made it a real word, and it's in a dictionary. They did make you that a real what? word. That wasn't. You know what? That wasn't. It was like about five, yeah, three years ago, something like that. Three. Five. That hurt so bad. I, 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 I'm done with the human race. I'm done with life. I'm you said you gave up. I gave up a long time ago. I started the podcast man. saying I don't fuck this with humans. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my motto for the longest time. Humans, in the grand scheme of things, humans are stupid. It's just we are living. In no, you, well, my gripe is is that everybody wants to change shit because they feelings hurt. My feelings been hurt all my life. Ain't nobody changed shit for me. Why the fuck you? We gotta change shit for you, Why bitch. Is- Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I've been joking on all my life. Watch me preach. All my life, I had to fight. Watch me preach. Y'all don't give a fuck about me, bitch. Watch as a preach. black man, y'all Watch can kiss preach. my ass. Y'all. All my life, I had to fight. The only people that have to make this lifetime to complain about <clears throat> any people who have had shit done to them in their way. Out of their control. I don't want to hear about you if you're poor because you made a bad investment. I don't want to hear about you if you got them homeless because you chose to sell your house in a fucked up market, not doing the research. I don't want to hear about you if you got like the people that got raped, the people that got pillaged, the people that got plundered, the people that got oh. The government came in and did some shit against my will. I had no choice. They just moved me to fuck about my shit. Them the people I care about. The people that got Dominate laid the, the fuck man. off, they were excellent at their job, but they just got rid of my position at my job. Now I'm fucked up. I care about that. <clears throat> Eminent domain. Is that you what doing mean? stupid shit at work, like making TikToks and getting fired? Fuck you. Oh, what was me, ass nigga? I'm done with all, yo, yo. Oh, woe is me as bit. We are at a front in life. We can keep on common bullshit. Or we gonna actually call shit with it. Most people that gotta complain about their life fucked up because of dumb shit that they did. When my car got fucked up last week, guess what? I was annoyed as fuck I had to pay that money, but guess whose fault it was? Oh yeah, when there's ever a problem with me, I'll be the first one to say I'm some dumb. I'm a dumbass for doing that shit. But guess what happens after that, though? <clears throat> then I learn, mm-hmm. and I don't repeat the mistake. But it ain't that I'm mad <clears throat> at the world. I don't treat the world different. I don't blame Face, who way up there in Virginia ain't touched my car, ain't drove my car, ain't turned the key in ignition, and blame him and treat him fucked up for it. Oh, I don't say the black man over in California don't like don't like black men in Georgia because we we you know we watching the last because my car broke. Man, if you don't get the fuck out of here. I had a problem. That ain't black men. That's me. Me for some shit that I did. Mm-hmm. Let me deal with it. We ain't about to keep doing this shit, yo. I'm so my head is full with just stupid shit. I feel like it's we're just living everything. in a town where everybody wants to wants to try to find an issue to care about when oh, they ain't got shit to care about because shit ain't got shit to do. Find a fucking hobby. Do shit. Fill your time with a hobby so you won't search for shit to care about. When the I, shit that you the shit that you care about and the shit that you should be care about it should be innate innate to you. It's your immediate shit. You shouldn't have to go search for a cause because the causes that matter to you automatically is there. It resonates with you. It has something to do with you. You don't go searching for something to care about. Those shits are not true for you. You're just searching for something to some to, to have something to put yourself behind. Get a fucking hobby. They have hobby stores. They do. Mm-hmm. Number one rule to living a long life. Mind your fucking business. Yes. Number two thing, not to lose your mind in old age. And as you're getting older, get a fucking hobby and find something to do with your own fucking time. 
but number three, I also remember number one and mind your fucking business. Mm-hmm. Is it, it, that simple? Mind the business, they live. Real simple. I'm a, oh. I'm a black man. Unless it's my brother or my homie Pat mm-hmm. or my other two homies. I really don't give a fuck what you said about black men because you ain't talking about me or anybody I know that I care about outside of my family and friends. So don't don't affect me. So I don't really get behind many of these calls and issues because it ain't got shit to do with me at all. And the 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 residual issues, the resi- the confounding conflicts, I ain't got shit to do with me. Or nobody I care about. Now, if and when any of those circumstances or reverberations reach that, me that, or any of mine, then I'll pick up arms and be like, okay, I don't like this part, but I'm not going to ride wholeheartedly for some shit that ain't got nothing to do with me. But that's the shit that be sent to me, though. It do, though. It, it does end up having shit to do with us. Because what happens is <clears throat> every nigga that I know, from me, you, Pat, Chewy, Jewel, Goddamn chair, every nigga that I know that had to deal with some baggage from another bullshit ass nigga or some bullshit ass woman that brings in these different issues that we be talking about because they <clears throat> they, they come from perspectives where they don't actually like deal with their own shit. And I'm tired of that shit. Like uh you know what it is? It ain't it ain't uh can you repeat your last sentence for me? I want to make sure I get it clear. I'm sorry. I want I want you to just say it the way you said. Yes, it. yes. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right. Well, what I'm going with it is, at the end of the day, most of us end up suffering from the fact that we deal with people that come with baggage from the. the from society that ain't got shit to do with how we have to act. Amen. And I've dealt, and I've seen everybody, everybody in my life deal with, it. whether it be a family issue they dealt with, whether it be a like a girlfriend, you know, issue, a wife issue, a a cousin issue, a friend issue, or whatever. Like I, over the years, I've seen every person that I love deal with that type of a bullshit. Where like, I ain't got shit to do with me. That's what shit you want. <clears throat> like that's some shit you brought. I ain't, I ain't add none of this to the fire. Like there's some other shit. You feel me? Like I remember in chemistry class, we used to uh, learn from Mister Rich. You know what I'm saying? We used to have them a goddamn uh, class where you goddamn had a uh, the different color flame depending on what chemicals you actually use in the building of the flame. You feel me? You might get a green flame, you might get a blue flame, you might get a red flame, you might get a purple flame. Blue flame. Whatever the case is, yeah, blue flame. I remember that club. Great wing. Um. Anyway, when you get to that though, you're talking about a situation where, all right, I brought this that make a green flame. So why the fuck every time we argue, I keep seeing this goddamn yellow flame pop up? That ain't me. Mm-hmm. That's some shit. That's you. <clears throat> I ain't have that element. That ain't me. That ain't that ain't in my bag. That's you. Keep your flaming ass over there. And I think that's the problem. Like, society deals with an issue of like everybody throw their personal biases. Like the person, like the first woman that made the comment on Chris Rock special. Because if you remember, it was the live, the way Netflix did it was like one of them first times they did a live event mm-hmm. where everybody was watching it at the same time. If you was <laughs> nigga, can you control yourself? I'm trying to call Realize, to no, I guess, no, I need you to understand spatial awareness. See where your cord is. Mm-hmm. Put your cord in a better space. Then. That's the second time you and your cord have done something that's uh, ridiculous. And then you're just leaving it there. So I'm just confused. Like, what's happening? Here? Um, <laughs> and it's filled the same way. This nigga just knocked the goddamn ass thing over and left it there. Oh, he, didn't move, he didn't do anything to fix it. He just... I didn't see... Nigga, this is shit, though. You bring your baggage to my shit. I ain't got shit to do with me. I'm sitting here chilling. My cords is all in, in, in alignment so that I don't knock shit over tonight. Because I know me. I'm clumsy. I know who I am as a person. I've aligned myself for this. 
And then here we go. Padawan to knock two things over already tonight. He got one more strike for us. Stone Cold stunned his ass across this table because I still low him for what he spit on me. I ain't forgot. <laughs> All right, it's funny. <laughs> 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 like, this shit ain't really funny. <laughs> this shit is hilarious. Oh my god! It's been a while. I don't care, nigga. Put that long court uh, on on an area that ain't gonna knock shit else over. Oh, um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> as we broke to give you what you need. Uh, that was my icebreaker topic. It went kind of long. Because we all kind of be fiery. And uh, Pet had a bad day, so he was kind of fired up. And then, you know, Face always got a rant ready for you. And then, uh, <clears throat> I don't know where the fuck my shit came from, but as we started talking about this, shit started making me mad and matter. I ain't gonna even front. Um, I'm about sick of us. Yeah, I ain't about to go back to it. I ain't about to At the end of the day, Chris this. Rock had his, uh, um, he could he can cuss out whoever he wants. Yo, I'm gonna tell you this. As long as I laugh. Nigga got yeah. smacked. Let that man get his jokes off. Now the now the time he actually don't if, if I don't laugh, then that's where we have a violation because that's your that's your profession. Your profession is to make me laugh. Comedy is comedy. We got to stop judging comedy the way we <clears throat> judge like actual social rhetoric and discourse. <clears throat> like he wasn't making a manifesto on society; he was making a comedy. I don't give a fuck about nigga, what his political views your, are. I yeah, just want just him, him to make shit. me laugh. I nigga. can listen like, to a right wing comic or a left wing comic and still have the same type of view. I can listen to a black comic or white view. Like I'm, I'm not listening to you at that point to see what your political views are. I'm just listening to see if you're funny. Where is Ja? Whatever your point of view is, can you make it funny? Where is Ja? Like that's how no, I feel about no, it. Like no, it's no, Chris no, Rock. No, no. It's Chris Rock. I'm not waiting for Chris Rock to make the the world decisions. No. Well, I'll be with him, I'll be no! Here. No, holla, holla. I don't want to. I'm tired of Is that you, me. Er, that at me I smell pussy. Years. Is that you, Don't you? nobody give a fuck about what Pookie got to say. <clears throat> hey, man. The, the funniest part about that whole comedy special was when I imagined Muhammad Ali versus Pookie. <laughs> oh shit, that is funny because he was Muhammad. Will yeah, was Muhammad just, Ali. Like I, that wish, was I, I hope somebody got a meme out there with their chest side by side just to see the pectoral difference. Like, like goddamn, <laughs> oh, goddamn, you take your shirt off one time and it was horrible. I I saw oh, this. Man. I saw this one you comment. You ain't doing not a push up on set or nothing. You ain't try. You didn't even try to pump that shit up real quick for the camera turn on. You just like you sucked everything in, nigga. God damn, nigga. I saw this one this comment. Nipples went in about what Chris Rock on line, and it Why is everything sucked in. You and, like a straw in a McDonald's milkshake. I saw this one comment about Chris Rock online. This dude seemed like he was trying to Niggas insult a, Chris. A frosty Chris. To a straw and that shit just... <laughs> he he uh this dude seemed like he was trying to insult Chris, but it was like, no, you're just reiterating what he just said. He was like, All right, he was talking about how you know how Chris at the end was talking about you you slap somebody you know you could beat. You a bitch ass nigga, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So the comment that the person made was you you got slapped by a bitch. So what that make you? No. I'm gonna say if two niggas are bitch. All right, watch this. Watch how I make words mm-hmm. and I use them correctly. You ready? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if two niggas are both bitches, but one is a larger bitch, the larger bitch wins. That means he's a bigger bitch. Because he's larger. <laughs> so I mean we we back to square one with that argument. Like mm-hmm. that shit don't follow logic. Like at the end of the day, if we're calling Will Smith a bitch and we're calling Chris Rock a bitch, and I mean they both bitches. That means the larger physically of the two bitches is obviously going to still win. So we still back at the argument that Chris Rock made making sense. Yeah, so we done with that. Yeah, so well, we ain't that's, to, like, that's see, why I said that do. comment did not see, make any is, sense. It just reiterated what podcast, he said. You got genius level intellect that used to challenge each other. 
But we ain't about to play with these semantics. We ain't about to play like it was like a waste of comment. undertone <clears throat> and the fact that we all grew up very hood, so we have a very uh ghetto vernacular that we choose to use. Especially to, me, because I can't pronounce all of shit. You. Don't get that confused with the fact that like IQ levels is pretty fucking high. Like I produced a legit gene. Like when you put our IQs on the chart, them shit we could go to mess. What we ain't about to do is do that. So when you talk to this podcast, we ain't about to play them games. We see through all that bullshit. Bullshit to so you, fuckery. You can suck our collective partner. <laughs> and I said, fuck all that shit. And I said, man, you mad at that shit. And fight me if you want to, bitch. And that's why I'm at. Fight me if you want it, and we can shoot it out too. I'm done with all this shit. We ain't about to do no more arguing. We ain't about to do no more coddling. Look, I'm gonna say this again, and I started my topic with it, and then I'm gonna turn this shit over to Face and Pat and let them go for the rest of. The- hey, fuck my fuck my second topic. I'm gonna just let y'all go. Look, some black women, bitch. Some black women is hoes. Some black men is bitches. Some black men is hoes. Some black people is niggas. Some of every race is niggas. Some of every race is hoes. Some of every race is bitches. And guess what? We gonna call them what they eat. The floor is yours, my brother. I hate y'all motherfucking humans. But anyway, it's you know it's about that time. It's Monday. What is it? It's 1058. Good and it's the one episode 119. Good and fuckery. <laughs> For F you. All right. Okay. Um, and speaking of effing, with the stone cold middle thing. Speaking of effing, uh, this first fuckery <laughs> for this week. Uh it's uh remember the chick that got trained on that was a police officer. She has nigga, what <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, what you ain't about to do is just uh casually segue into that, just yelling you, out. You remember that bitch? My that, ass. You remember that bitch that was fucking, you know, trained on it? Nigga, what? what? Well, a uh, couple of fuckeries back. There was it was this one police Come officer. Lady, trained, this one police oh, officer man. lady that was being the office whore. Oh yeah. She got the little ugly face, little mm. chipmunk pie face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look like a moon pie in the face. She has come out to say that she was she sexually groomed. She needs to go in. She bitch. was sexually groomed into groomed being a adult. police. We ain't about to do that either. Watch officer. that. Unless you, unless, <clears throat> unless you saying that they was fucking sexually combing your hair and styling you. Former to ten- ten- Tennessee police officer. No, 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 no. Megan Hall. No, no, no. Stop. Stop! Don't you read no more. Don't you read another word. Can the twenty-six-year-old. Stop. Stop. Right there. I was answering right the question. There. Twenty-six-year-old. Stop stop, stop! 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 Can I just ask my second question before you read anymore? Yes. I want to make sure we even got to waste our time. Over. I was just practicing my narrator oh. voice. When did this affair start? Ooh. How old was she when it started? Uh, well, she was a police officer when it happened, so she had to been of age. We don't. <laughs> Move on. She, she accused somebody of grooming. Of, Hold on, you said grooming. Of being you said sexually groomed. groomed. You said, all right, we're moving on. Yeah. I, I you can't be groomed if you are if you of age. Sexually grooming means that I have caught you under age and I have manifested a relationship with you that gives me influence and grants me some type of access to you as you become of age, so that I can then begin a sexual relationship with you. That's a whole different relationship. Than what you know, what happened to you is, bitch, you went in there, you was the jump off, they use you as a jump off, you got caught as the jump off, and now you 
Man, we move. Bitch, on. I get I had the I'm great not doing idea. This shit. I'm not doing this I shit. I had the great not on tonight. I had the great idea of you sucking my dick. You also thought that was a great idea. And I, I couldn't I couldn't disagree. I couldn't disagree at all. Hey, I think it was a, a stupendous idea. I thought of it. You know? Let me let me be clear. But since you agreed upon said idea, Ooh, there's the no ones. way you these can be ones. groomed these because you ones. agreed to Ooh. it. And mm. you're 26 fucking years old. Not only that, you're a grown fucking adult. Not only that, you're in a fucking officer of the law. So that oh, means you are trained into what is right and wrong legally. You now, how the fuck you get through all that training and say, how the fuck are you a, a police officer and do not know accountability? Look. This is your conscience that, speaking. That Oh, I don't have my whistle. Okay. <laughs> it was like a flat line. All right. All right. Um, bitch. <laughs> look. Look. We missed all that. I hope. I hold it. I spent a lot of my early 20s being a ho. That came with some. There were some relationships that were tarnished. There were some bridges that were burned. There were some girls that I probably did some things to that ruined them emotionally for the naked dude after me. I kind of wish I was a whole There's side all of, of these things myself. that are consequences nice. of my decision. I was waiting but guess nice. what we ain't about to do? <clears throat> is go back and then try to act like I didn't make them decisions. I'm sick and tired of women. I'm just mad at her because she ain't going through dick. their whole phase, but then not wanting to accept the consequence set up. When I talk to a woman at this age, I'm now pushing 40. I'm 39. I have to have real conversations with the woman that I date now. Because when I'm when I'm talking to them, I have to be very clear because at this age, I'm dealing with adult women and I don't deal with no woman that's a bitch. I don't deal with no women that's a hoe. So that means I'm dealing with real women that actually have expectations, standards. They actually have conversation. They have intellect. They want to understand exactly what my intentions are as we embark on whatever it is. So I got to be real clear and know what I want. What I'm going to say from that is my, my point being made is <coughs> I'm tired of right. going into situations where I'm vulnerable, open. This is who I am. This is what I want. This is what I like. This is what I accept. This is what I want. This is what I cannot accept. This this like this is everything. This is it. Five. Book on the table. And we keep dealing with fucking women who goddamn want to sit there and be like, well, you know, I, I did this in my 20s, but this ain't. No, that's who you are. That's who you are. You a hope. Doing whole shit. You can be reformed. <clears throat> you can have changed your behavior. But the thoughts and patterns that led you to them decisions in the first place are still there. Like you I can't unsuck that dick. No, no, because this is what the thing <laughs> that, is, though. You can't unsuck was, that dick. No, because this you, the, you already sucked the dick. This is the thing. <laughs> when you have a whole mentality, right? Watch me preach on this. Come on with it. No, you ain't gotta whistle this shit. Because the bitch I'm, did I'm whistling that for dick. me. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She did that. She did that. She did it. We ain't got to whistle that shit. We ain't suck now. What she did that. They did a good job. But watch this thing. Watch after she sucked. Watch after she sucked. She was a whole when we met. Watch this. I was a whole when I met her. Watch this. <coughs> because of that, I'm nasty. So it's going to be some things in the bedroom I'm going to expect. So that means that we gonna have to do some nasty things in order for you to satisfy me, in order to make it so that oh shit, I don't have to find that from nothing else because I'm used to having to find things from different places because the average person don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But you saying you can do it, mm -hmm. so we there. 
Once you suck but that dick, it's unsuckable. Baggage. But that's baggage, though. But that's what I'm saying. We all carry them <laughs> things. So the problem ain't that men and women have like this major <clears throat> issue for each other. The problem is that most men are willing to un- like lay their baggage out like this. Who I am? I'm nasty as fuck. I want I want to spit in your mouth. I want to goddamn grab your hair. I want to choke you from the back. I want to goddamn do all this crazy shit, right? Huh? I want to goddamn. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at face. Look at. Yo, why you look like that? You look like, Yo, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, get the ball, get the ball. Amber alert. Amber alert. <laughs> Amber alert. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking at me like, who the fuck did you think about? <laughs> and why are you looking at us like that? I don't like it. I don't want to. No. Pineapple. Uh, Episode 119. No. Good and fuckery. No, it's not good. It's all fuckery. No. <laughs> this episode was brought to you by the letter B for bitch. Yo, bitch ass. Oh, shit. Oh shit! I hope you enjoy today <laughs> episode one nineteen. Oh shit! I'm a little tipsy. I'm sorry, y'all. I just I'm just saying shit for the. I got pants. on my Corona pants. <coughs> you do. I got on Corona pants. <laughs> and I have my shirt that says "Not mistake the fuck away." Not mistake the fuck away. Corona. <laughs> That, that way, everybody know that I'm peaceful, but stay the fuck away from me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you just know when I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I you know I that. My in the wrong and place. if you look at face shirt, you know that he he probably do black ops work. All right, so this one I'm gonna say. I'm, I'm gonna go here. With it. I'm gonna go here with it. <laughs> that bitch a hoe. <laughs> no, stop. What we ain't about to do is keep allowing women to get away with murder. Bringing in bags, but not addressing said bags, and then blaming said men. You can bring a bag, but don't bring bags. I don't know how I got here, but I feel like this is a. <clears throat> go, just go. You can bring a bag, but don't you. bring baggage. Can't go. That's I'm what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Get, hey, hey, heal your ass before you come to me. I, I'm not here to be your therapist unless you pay. Me. Man, if your parents got something wrong with you, you don't need to be dating. I don't, I don't, you I ain't, ain't, ain't me literal. I mean, you heal yourself. Let me say this. Heal. Heal yourself. Women, women out there get into a relationship and don't want to deal with a man who's still, deal, who's de- still dealing with his childhood trauma or past trauma. The same thing goes for men looking to get in relationships to women. They don't want to deal with your past traumas and relationship dramas either. So before you take a step forward, knowing some of the same expectations you have for a man coming in, those same expectations have to be met by you, and you have to deal with the same things that you ha- don't want somebody else to deal with. Ah! Handle your own stuff. Have self-accountability and self-awareness for what you need to deal with before you give it to someone else. God, no one else God. wants to bear the bear the brunt of your past issues. It takes a special person to get in a relationship with you, bear those issues with you, and still want to grow with you. And those people are rare for you to find in this world. So with the world as it is today, with this emotionally charged world, the best thing to do, if you are single, before you try to get with somebody else and you have all these expectations, take that look in the mirror. Be self-aware of the things that you still have to get over, need to get over, and need to stop repressing to process through before you can look at anyone else and evaluate them with any clarity. Smell yourself, bitch. 
smell yourself. There, there you go. Back to smell. And heal you. You, you have to have a clear mind, clear conscience, and, and just clear of trauma before you evaluate someone else for for their level of sanity, level for emotional intelligence, or anything. How dare you try to get into a, a relationship with anyone else, judging them on, or you still dealing with your past traumas? Well, fucker, you are too. Mm, come on. That's the key. Watch this. It ain't even about talking. I'm going to break it down to the simplest form. What you said gave me the formula. So I want to shout out, I want to shout out face for like unlocking the code in his church. Preach. In, in his answer. Like he, 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 he touched on the E to it all. The problem with the average one, because there's a lot of women too. That don't have this issue. They they are totally fine with navigating this next thing that I say. Totally fine. But the average woman cannot hold themselves accountable for the things that they wish from the world around them. They cannot give honesty to men that they want to be honest with. Them. They cannot give loyalty to men that they want to be loyal to them. They cannot give uh, finance to a man that they want to give financially to them. They cannot give vulnerability and like they can't even, there's women out here that can't even can tell do, a man bitch? how many men they slept with. But they want a man to be honest with them about everything. No. Even though I'm most men are comfortable sharing their body count. Totally fine. <clears throat> but there's women who are terrified of that. I'm going I'm to interject real quick. I'm going to put y'all on game. I'm going to put the world on game. And this this for women. You feel me? Exactly. Um, I mean, it comes down to like they're not willing to reciprocate the things that they mm -hmm. want. They don't want to give. Like they, mm -hmm. they have standards but are unwilling to meet a body standard they have religion standards but are unwilling to meet those same standards they have financial standards and do not meet those <clears throat> they have um social standards as far as the way you are your, your social intelligence level yet they don't they're unwilling to meet those you have the ratchetness of bitches that won't goddamn braxton pender hughes of niggas bitch you are a hood bitch. He don't want you. He got sense. He want to be able to go to a five-star restaurant and be just as comfortable as he is at the goddamn Piggly Wiggly. But he can't do that with you because you don't know how to code switch. Your code is always on. No, they, they, they're against code switching. They feel Talk like <clears throat> they feel like they're being Talk fake if they code switch, but they be fake about every damn thing else. But that's that's my thing. But what were you saying? You were about to say something, face. You have expectations for people, but you gotta be able to meet them with your expectations in the end. But your expectations in them have to reflect on their end as well, too. So in the instance, you're mirroring yourself. What you want, you got to give. What you don't want, don't give it. If you don't want a motherfucker lying to you, don't lie to them. If you want a motherfucker bring a certain amount of shit to the table, bring that certain amount of shit to the table. You can't ask for what you can't bring. You can't bring honesty. Don't ask for it. Don't expect it either. How can you bring honesty if you can't be honest about how you even look? Beautiful eyes. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. People don't want to break it down to the essence of what you're saying, face. Like you keep on hitting on these nails. Eyes. Like Girl you are banging. BBL. Like. Because I mean it in the most philosophical of ways. But you are banging the nails on the head each time. Like you are hitting the very like essence of each point. You are driving this shit home, Paul. Like he's he talking. Mm -hmm. The nigga preaching. God working through him tonight. It's face. But this the thing. Ooh. That's I the problem. 
<clears throat> how can you deal with a group of people? And again, there's a group of women that just don't even fight. Just we love y'all. They gonna look at this. We and are, be like we oh, always glorify y'all. We, we love y'all. We don't do that because it ain't you. You're no, right. You're right. It ain't you. Where well, we agree, I concur. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> the problem is the majority of women that men are running into because you got to look <clears> at <throat> the same way you got a twenty percent ratio of men that actually meet the high value men that these women are having in their list. When they write their little standards down on a list or whatever, that's 20% of men that actually may even come close to that. 10% of men that actually meet. Every other man is somebody else. Same thing with women for us. We got the top 10%, but the, the difference between men and women is men don't go for them. The average man, if, if, if I, if the average man is very ratio driven. We logical. The average seven as a man is probably with a seven one. If he dated up, he got lucky as fuck and got the one number up. If he <laughs> if not, he's with who he is or one number down. It's pretty much in that range. We like we know who we are. Men, we, we date in that range. If we are eight, we got an eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nine, we got a nine. <clears throat> Usually, if you got a two. You see a nigga with a two. You see that fluffy motherfucker from the trailer park. He gonna be with the fluffy broad from the trailer park. They gonna be together at Sizzler, happy as fuck at the bus. Eating sandwiches and shit. Happy. As shit. Mm -hmm. Like these are things that are natural because men are logical. We not delusional like that. There's no like we have feelings, but feelings don't drive feelings. our action, and that's the difference. <laughs> Women. Feelings have to drive your actions because if not, there would be no one to nurture the baby. There would be no one to actually give a fuck about the baby. Men would leave babies Fucking laying kids. there crying as we go off and go hunt the next day. You feel me? Like that's 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 like when we like we we gotta stop acting like science ain't a thing, yo. I feel everybody on this religion shit because I'm really I, I I consider myself a religious person. I pray to God every day. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in God. I believe in all that shit. Like I, I really do. I, I know for a fact that it's the reason that I'm here and it ain't me and it's God. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I do. That's my belief. I'm not saying that it's your fact. I'm just saying that's my belief. But I also believe that God gave us science to understand the shit that he can't explain to us because it's in God's terms. So what the fuck will we know? And when we look at science, things make sense. Things make sense universally. Meaning no matter what language you speak, no matter what race you are, no matter what religion you are, no matter what gender you are, no matter what creed you are, no matter where you was grown up, grown up at, that shit's still going to be true there. Mm-hmm. In that place in your brain, it's gonna still be a fact, it's gonna still happen the way oh, we say. So, what I'm saying is, we animals, men going to deal with women, <laughs> we're gonna deal with women where they at. <coughs> if you get a man that is loyal to you and monogamous to you, understand you have a man that is going against all natural urges in him. Because I want to fuck that bitch. As a woman, I'm going to tell y'all, you have to be honest and be loyal to that man. Because if you don't, he will fuck you over. Because again, he's withholding things to get to that point. <clears throat> like, that's not the natural order of males in mammal <clears throat> society in the world. I ain't talking about just humans. I'm talking about just mammals in general. When you look at the majority of mammals, most men in mammal society, the males propagate and then leave. And humans are animals. We just realize that leave. we're human. And then they go copulate so again and then leave. They may hunt food <clears throat> to make sure that the woman and the babies eat and then they go go, go fuck some up. That's what they do because their job is to procreate and create enough people so that the ones that die don't like can offset the ones that live. Humans are no different. 
I want to be clear. When I say this again, I want to be clear. I ain't calling you no monkey. I ain't going to no dumbass. Like, let me be clear what I'm saying. We are mammals. Mammals follow these laws. We are no different. The only difference is we have free will. But we can choose to go against the natural order of what our urges tell us. Which is why when a woman is around a dude that she finds attractive, she will start to get physically aroused. Nipples get hard, pussy get wet. She don't want it to happen, but it will. Especially around Pat. I'm just like fuck <laughs> out of here. Like we ain't about to do these dumbass games, man. Like that's the, that be the shit, and that be the shit that fuck. Oh, man. Well, uh, just remember, y'all, humans are stupid, and you are human. You are only one of two things. You're an animal or a plant. And if you and I ain't and, no protozoa. <clears throat> I'm not a fungi. I'm not a, 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 I'm not none of that shit. So you can't that shit. I'm not a protozoan. I'm not none of that shit. I'm a human. I, I am. I am a. I eat plants and smoke plants. Safety. I eat and smoke plants. I'm not oh, a plant. Yeah. That would be cannibalistic. Oh, it's like a penis fly trap. Oh, oh, a penis fly trap. I said a penis fly trap. Oh, I'm about to give you that, nigga. That was about to be clever as fuck, nigga. <laughs> you got a you got a penis fly trap for this. Uh, that would be this kind of, just come that's floating scary. into your dick, and then that shit just got your bit. It's like ten times. It's, it's 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 no. <laughs> well, uh, how the fuck do I say? Well, we don't want to get in trouble, and uh, I don't give a fuck no more. And uh, maybe trouble is the way to go. Maybe, maybe. And um, well, all right. Let me let me just. I'll do this. This how I segue. All right. So, um, I had to pay all the car notes. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I, uh, literally, I had, I had to pay, to pay all the car notes. Uh, How well, many car notes did you got? Bitch? Well, you know, I have one, so I don't know what that. Means. I I have like I have one I have one, but I also uh, have a note with, in which I don't even actually really pay. The the company pays for or what? So uh, let me just get into it. All right. So I had to pay that. And I'm using this as a segue. Is that um, I had to pay my car note, and Ford, the company Ford, uh, they just put in a patent that, yeah, if you don't pay a note on time, they can have a self-driving car repossess themselves. They put in the patent for that, the repossessing car. I asked so you. So you lease the car. Mm -hmm. You don't pay your note. Car drives itself back to the lot. Mm -hmm. Like fuck your shit. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you know what? I'm tired of being with you. I'm going home. Here's my question. I'm mad at it. Here's, here's my question. I understand it. I understand the logic behind it as a Capricorn. I understand it. I understand it. But if you're the first, how many people are gonna be buying Fords in these cars? Though? New ones. I buy one. I pay my I pay my car note every month on time. I feel like this only affects people that, that yeah. are fucking delinquent payers. <clears throat> like if you if you suck at paying bills on time, then you. But the only thing I don't pay on time is fucking free trials that I don't really <laughs> want anyway. <laughs> Pretty much everything else is usually paid on time. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, it's because it's like, uh, oh, this card wasn't working. Let me move to the next card real quick. Mm -hmm. But like. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't have that issue. So like, but there, is, but there are people that with, this, with those issues. Sometimes you may just have that one good, that one bad month, or whatever. And my car decides to go wherever <clears throat> it's gonna go, right? To stop me. Then damn it, the car win. I don't know. I can't well, fight it, the car. Now that you say that, though, I would say if you got to the point that you're actually paying for that car, and I mean, with it 
being a new patent, it would have to be new cause that would what do that. What you just told me is mm -hmm. I am late on my car note mm -hmm. and up to the point where they are repossessing my car. Mm -hmm. That's true. Take the car. Mm. You win. I fucked up. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a grown ass man. I ain't about to do this shit. I ain't about to be hiding cars and spots. And don't, like, no, I <clears throat> I knew I shouldn't have got this damn car. I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. like, you can always, this shit, you can always. Like, what we doing, Pat? Like, these motherfuckers. I mean, I ain't the one that made the patent. No, I ain't talking about you. I'm talking <laughs> about, like, what we doing, Pat? Like, let these motherfucking robots come get these niggas stars. Fuck these niggas. But I will they say this: if you car. if you do get them, I mean, because these are going to be future cars, and being that they're future cars, that that means if you're you got the money to actually get a new car, if you get repoed, you deserve. Then it. you you deserve it if you get repoed. Now, if you got like a fucking used car or whatever, shit. <laughs> if you got a used car, you deserve it because guess what. No, I'm saying used car, you don't even really got to worry about that situation. You still just got to worry about just paying the damn shit. Dude might come around with with the um, tow truck. And then to tell you the truth, if the car repossessed itself, that might be a safer situation for you because those people with the tow trucks come with the guns. And if you were ever watch South Beach Tow, mm -hmm. you might get run up on by Bernie. Mm -hmm. mm, I think I've seen that show before, yeah. Bernice, a big yeah. <clears throat> but I just brought it up because it's and a new thing this. and I just wanted and to see what y'all want to feel about it. Just just brought it up because it's new news, new technology news, and whatnot. Keep going. All right. Um next we're going to Florida. And you know what that means. Oh, oh, it starts with oh shit. Episode 119, Good and Fuckery. This Good and Florida Fuckery man. was brought to you by the letter F, as in fuckery, as in, in Florida. Florida. <laughs> All right. Florida. This Florida bill would require bloggers who write about the governor and legislators to register with the state. Basically. That sounds like some Ron DeSantis shit. Yes. But it's actually one of his colleagues that put it into play. Pretty much, but I don't. I'm, I'm pretty it sure he don't disagree. Like his, I guess I don't know. Like, let me shut <clears> down <throat> anybody who has a dissenting opinion and make sure I get my opinion above everybody else's. All of that shit. Like, yeah, that's him. Ron DeSantis is like the Trump that the Republicans always wanted. He is just as very racist, much so, but he's very much so. He can say it in a way that he sounds like a regular politician. Agree. That's that's all he is. He's like he's he's Trump 2.0. That's it. Without the money. He's Trump with uh more brains and less money. And maybe less scandals. I mean, everybody got less scandals Somewhere. than Trump. Somewhere. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Somewhere. Or whatever. I feel uh, like they just I feel like they kept Ron DeSantis on a lot every other week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. it's all to just, you know, rile up that one basis that they know will vote for. This is true. This That's is all. True. I'm um uh okay, this one up. I'm going to I'm going to go to this one about the Tennessee lawmaker and I'm going to use the, this this one about the 7th. Uh I want to say that for last cuz that one that okay, one that's a, good one. One. that's a good. I'm going to play the video for it. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm glad y'all added that in. I'm uh cuz I was thinking about adding that in too. Yeah, buddy. And then I, yeah, today was yeah. great. Um so Tennessee lawmaker uh, Representative Paul Sherrill apologizes after <laughs> suggesting that hanging by a tree is a method of execution. And this is Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yes, basically. Basically. And then he apologizes saying that he didn't mean to do it. Um, he Thank didn't you, mean to But Sorry. There's no way you don't mean to do that. No, it, um, like you, he 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 said he didn't mean like, to say it I'm in say a this. racist term. I'm gonna say this. So I'm gonna say this. hanging, um, pulling by quartering, um, 
all of these different types of executions were all things that were used to kill black people. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you this. If you decide to bring them up in a casual conversation, you're going to be looked at as a person that is insensitive, at least on a racial level. If not a racist, that doesn't mean that you are, but I'm telling you now. So if you've ever seen this podcast and you happen to be thinking about bringing this up in your next political debate, just know how it's going to come off to the general public, whether you move for it to or not. And and at this point, black people do not have time to figure out if you are racist or not. We don't. We we really don't. Y'all done hang uh, enough of our uncles, aunts, cousins, either um, metaphorically or literally. Like like we're not. We don't have time to figure out if you a racist asshole or not. If it's the littlest thing, we're gonna just say you racist. Because we don't have time, okay? And we don't have time to debate you on how stupid you were for saying something ignorant that you know is going to be ignorant. And you know it's going to get you a problem, especially if you're a public figure. You're a fucking public figure. No, you don't dance. No, you don't sing. No, you don't make music or make movies. But you're a fucking politician. That means you're going to be in front of the public because you're talking to the fucking public. You're making laws for the fucking public. So when you say shit, it's going to go out to the fucking public. And guess what? Not all of the fucking public look like you, bitch. Bitch? As my friend, my compadre, and my fellow partner said, words have meaning. And I I, I, I see the meaning on um, what you were saying. Now, He has came forth and said, my exaggerated comments were intended to convey my belief that for the cruelest and most heinous crimes, a just society requires the death penalty in kind, Cheryl said. Although a victim's family cannot be restored when an execution is carried out, a lesser punishment undermines the value we place on protecting lives. Well, uh, what I say in response that you should be a little bit more diligent than protecting those lives and to get to that point one more thing i know tis about to say something too there is a law in the constitution against cruel and unusual punishment with your bitch ass as a politician and lawmaker you should be very familiar with that rule and law with your bitch ass words have me if you would like to have a great punishment that is very much so racial neutral. Just go to the uh, method of South Carolina. You could have said that, Tennessee. You could have said that, but you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. Your ancestors must have fucking like possessed you for five seconds or some shit. That maybe that's what it was with your. You went, you went real Caucasian. Very, um, very Anglo-Saxon. Real man, real, real man. Miracle whip. No miracle. No, I don't do that. Miracle whip. Oh yeah, you yeah, like it. Man, caucus mind. You know, very caucus. Very miracle. Very Stonehenge druid. Very, very pagan. Very, very fake Christian. Very, well, all of those. Things. Very false Christian of you. Now, um, <clears throat> I don't know if this next dude is a false Christian. Oh, is it not false? No, yeah, it's very much so. Fuck okay. that dude. We okay. going to the next step. <laughs> I'm sorry. Episode. Mm-hmm. Um, Good and fucker. Brought to you. By I'm gonna play a video, and then I just wanted to get y'all take on it. I have my own personal <laughs> opinion. But mm, I, kind of I so definitely much. wanted to see what other black men thought of this black man, black man's <clears throat> opinion of um, his situation with the relationships he has with the mothers of his children. And you guys, 
are in both very different places when it comes to relationships. You know, as am I. So I just wanted to just see what 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 the temperature was, see what people felt about it, other than myself. Um, because when it hit me, it, it definitely struck me in a very uh visceral place. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna play this video and then I'm gonna let y'all kind of give y'all opinions, critiques, thoughts, etc. Is that a bald head nigga with a beard? Uh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a short haired nigga with a beard. Oh, uh -huh, so, it's close uh, enough. Yeah, it is close enough to what you thought it was. Oh, it get kind of violent. Oh, head nigga with a beard. I got seven kids and seven baby mamas. Now, for the past few days, I've been going live, telling my story, speaking my truth. And a lot of women having an issue calling me a deadbeat because I tell them I was being irresponsible, yet not wearing protection. But I always tell uh, these women that I got pregnant that I do not want to be a father to these children and i offer to pay for the abortion majority of times they'll either take the abortion or they'll take a plan b but only these seven have kept these children but the crazy thing about it is they want me to be responsible for some children i told them i did not want so for some years now some of them been trying to get in contact with me access denied because I, I don't really know why you're trying to get in contact with me i didn't told you i did not want them kids so don't expect me to be responsible financially, emotional, spiritually, mentally, or physically with some kids. I, I got seven kids and seven baby mamas. Now, for the past few days, I've been going live, telling my story, speaking my truth. And a lot of women having an issue calling me a deadbeat because I tell them I was being irresponsible, yet not wearing protection. But I always tell uh, these women that I got pregnant that Start running back, so I just took it out. <clears throat> Whatever. But we back. Go. Face mob. Go. Uh, anybody else want to go first? I'll go first. Go. Go. Right. So this is how I feel. All right. I. I was trying to give him benefit of the doubt, right? All right. Maybe he could find some type of way to explain this, this, this shit. All right. I will give him credit. He, he did take some accountability for it. All right. So, okay. He acknowledged that he fucked up. I will say, okay. He said a phrase, and I often find that people say this phrase right before they want to make some excuse for some fuckery that they did. I spoke my truth. Now, truth, the funny thing about truth is, is no bias to truth. Truth doesn't care about your feelings. It don't care about your financial situation. It don't care about your emotional or mental situation. Truth is what truth is. If your truth makes you look like you a dumbass because you got seven baby mamas pregnant and you you didn't vex, um, not vex, what is the word for it? Uh, vet. You didn't vet them to make sure that their mental was in the same chapter, same page as you. You can't, you can't blame them. And then it's the simple fact that at the end of the day, those children did not ask to be here, just like you. Just, I all I all I want to know is when one of them kids become like. Uh, uh, gets like a scholarship at a um, uh, HBCU, a uh, 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 very high 
rated college or something and then go into like professional or you get some kind of money. How you going to act? Are you going to come with the same energy? That's all I feel. Now, as far as the women go, okay, you feel that way. I understand that. But the only the only thing that I disagree with that you did this seven fucking times. One or two. All right, I give you pass. Three. We might be stretching it, but okay. But seven, nigga, seven? At the four, it should be a pattern for you. Like seven? Okay, these chicks, these chicks, these chicks, these chicks. Like most people that have a roster understand they roster. That's the reason they have a roster. Because they don't want no miscellaneous. They want to just do what they do, be at peace with what they do, and there's no drama. They know that they rostered is not going to come with drama. You didn't have this conversation with her. And you continuously went in raw. Continuously. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. I can't back you on this. I can't really support you. Like if it was because your numbers is too high. And then it's not like it's it's one baby mama, two baby mamas, three baby mamas. Each baby has their own mama. It's seven baby mamas. Seven. Nigga, seven is the lucky number. How are you so unlucky with the lucky num number? That's how you know you wrong. It's the lucky number. You unlucky with the lucky number. You at 14. You have seven babies, seven baby mamas. That's 14 people you're neglecting. That's you, nigga. That's two weeks. That's two weeks. Nigga, that's 14. That's the amount of days needed to get over COVID. It's 14, nigga. That's you. That's you the problem. You, nigga, you are the fucking problem. You. It's not the, it's not the women no more. It's you. Okay? It's obvious. The, the bitches around you like fucking you. You should, as a responsible man, know that these bitches like fucking you. And you should know that being that these bitches like fucking you, they're going to try to do some things to keep you around. Whether that's their intention or not. Seven times seven is seven plus seven, I should say. Seven, seven. It's the lucky number. I'm done. I'm done. How you unlucky with the lucky number? Okay. So let's dig into this situation. Feel feel free to like you know debate my shit. I, I just want to I want to see everybody perspective. I ain't got no debate. I just got a very different Let's debate. dig into this real quick. Seven kids, seven baby, baby mamas, seven different situations in seven different time periods. Okay. First of all, you say you tell everybody you don't want any kids, and every time you choose to be irresponsible. Someone else has to do something to counter your responsibilities. So they have to get an abortion or they have to get a plan B. But being that you're paying for it, that's okay, I guess, in your mind, in your mentality. Um, after the first kid, you saw, okay, this conversation I'm having isn't working. So maybe. I, as a man, should take some responsibility for my actions because I know what I want, but I also know what I enjoy doing. I enjoy having unprotected sex with a lot of women. And I know with unprotected sex, semen comes out of my penis, which can impregnate these women. Science. How about I get a vasectomy? That's one option. That way you don't you don't have to worry about their decisions to keep a child and now you don't have to play a power play based off what someone else wants based off your ours and responsibilities or number two at the first child 
when you stood on your ground saying that you didn't want to be a father, you do have the option of signing those rights away and having nothing to do with these kids. But you choose not to educate yourself either and be responsible and accountable on those accords either. So no, you may not be a deadbeat, but you are a dumbass. You don't have to want to be a father. You can have unprotected sex with all the women that's going to allow you to have it. Hey, that's the world. You can make your choices, but you must live by your choices. But if you're a dumbass, you're still a dumbass. That's just that. Your choices and decisions have made you a dumbass. Now you have seven kids that are going to they. I'm sorry for them, but they're a dumbass father. And nine times out of ten, at least four of the three, four of the seven of them are going to be dumbasses too because they have your dumbass genes in them. Mm -hmm. Make a phone call and get a vasectomy or make a phone call and sign your rights away because those kids deserve better. I don't know about the women because those women, their decision-making skills obviously won't there either because if you're telling them, I don't want to have a child and they're still allowing you to have unprotected sex with them, knowing they're not on birth control either, that's two dumbasses in a situation. Mm. Bringing a child into the situation knowing that, well, I know he don't want the baby. I don't know what to do with the baby, but the baby here now. The baby. Don't be dumb. Don't continue bringing lives into this world with no accountability over how you're going to provide for these lives. Expect the other taxpayers to step in and do it for you. Nah. Sure, sex is fun. But it's also an activity that has consequences if not done correctly. That's an adult activity. You know, now that he brought up the vasectomy and right, you know, writing your rights away, and everything, this all sounds real clout chasing. Just, you just I mean, did. like, nah, it ain't even clout chasing because a lot of people just don't choose to educate themselves and just know how to be an adult and handle man business. If you're out here having sex and there's a possibility of you having a child, you need to know what to do on all the courts. If you don't want to be a father, know how not to be a father. If you want to be a father, know how to be a father. Know how to put yourself in situations and get yourself out of those same situations. That's just it. Some I'm people just, are raised and bred different. That he made the video. Mm -hmm. Before I had a child, I knew the possibilities in and out of every situation possibility that I could possibly put myself in. Because I know I'm putting this thing in somebody else. This Something may happen. If I'm not ready to be a father, what must I do? To still know, okay, I'm good. I ain't got to do. If I do want to be a father, how do I do that? What steps must I take to be the best at that? That's just that. Some motherfuckers ain't built to take responsibility for their actions. And they built just to be the motherfuckers they are for the rest of the remaining of their lives. Regardless of their age or not. Because you got 60 year olds out here acting the same fucking way that this idiot is acting. And True. he's nowhere near 60. Is Sex true. is fun. Yeah, that is true too. But the responsibilities around it, some motherfuckers ain't built for it. Mm. Sure. So I don't say you're a dead big because you, you, you spoke on what you did not want. Cool. You put those expectations out there, but you continue to go with women and, and deal with women that ignore that. You saw that. Continue to do what you want to do. Got what you didn't want. And now it's a child out there that has to deal with this and grow up like that. It is what it is. That's your choice. Ain't really my business. And I can give a fuck less about your kids. But at the end of the day, fuck you recording your shit and put it on the internet for. Exactly. Just so people can call you a dumbass and, 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 and comment on your shit. Everybody want to be known for something. It ain't even clout. It just motherfuckers just, just want to be seen. Motherfuckers just want to be seen and heard. That's, you that's think that's cool? I know motherfuckers with more baby mamas than that. And them motherfuckers don't want motherfuckers to know. Because it ain't nothing to be proud of. You got all them baby mamas and all these goddamn kids, and I guarantee, motherfucker, I'm glad you ain't stepping up because you couldn't possibly step up. 
and do it effectively for all of them. You ain't Luke Cannon, Nick. 14. He was not Nick Cannon. Okay. Oh. I'm very glad that you both went the direction that you went in your responses. Um, it's actually perfect for my response. Uh, I want to start by saying that there is a there's a dichotomy to this. Right? This is not one of those uh, right or wrong. It's more just perspective. Uh, it's like a fiction type of thing. You know? But I'm going to say that I'm definitely uh, kind of torn. Uh, on the one hand, I definitely understand everything you said. I, I definitely think that there's a level of uh, accountability that the brother needs to take. Uh, I definitely think that there's a level of understanding of the sexual contract that the brother might need to uh, have uh, even a level of responsibility that should be handled afterwards, um, regardless of intent going in, mm -hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> but here's where I divert. So, the first time I watched it, I agree with you and Faith, like, probably wholeheartedly, like, I mm -hmm. was 100% where you guys were, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second time I watched it, I was still probably there. And then the third time I watched it, something happened, right? Mm -hmm. There's this thing that we always preach on this podcast. It's personal accountability. It's the understanding of so say me and Pat go into a contract with each other. My understanding of that contract is as strong as whatever his ability to live up to the terms that he presents of that contract is. Meaning, my understanding and my ability to react to that contract is only as strong as his ability to live up to the terms that he sets on his end of the contract. So if he says, I'm going to be here on Thursday at 9 a.m., I am entering that contract with the trust that he's going to be there Thursday at 9 a.m. I'm not, I'm not going into the contract thinking that he's going to flake out. Mm -hmm. Now, if he flakes out on the first contract and I go into another contract with him seven more times, that's on me. Right? Mm -hmm. But when I listen to this brother, he's saying that he's done this contract with several different women. Because that's essentially what sex is. We want to look at it as a bunch of different things, but it's transactional. It's a give or take. It's I'm trusting you to do something based off the things you told me, and I'm trusting me to do something based off the things I've told you, and we're trusting each other to both live up to whatever that is. I'm trusting you to be as clean as you said you were. Unless we both went to the clinic together yeah. or you've shown me pink. I'm trusting you to have your tubes tied or me to have a vas vasectomy. Because there's men who go against this contract as well. So I just want to be like as as distinct as possible. Like again, we're gonna we're gonna level this back to the beginning of words have me, right? Mm -hmm. So like when we talk about this as a social contract, that's literally what it is. It's me trusting you. So if this dude has trusted a thousand women, let's say, right? And a thousand of them have followed through on whatever terms they set that they had, right? And he trusted them on that and they followed through on that based off of it. And these seven decided to go against that. Does that mean that he's really the bad guy? Or does that mean that these seven who said that I'm going to take birth control, I'm going to get an abortion, I'm going to take a plan B, I have my tube tied, I cannot have kids, I whatever the case may be that they told him at the beginning, because again, the first time, second time, I hear y'all, right? Mm -hmm. And there is a case to be made there. So I don't want to negate that aspect of this, because it is kind of double-sided because again we're only getting his side I get so there's saying. pieces missing that we all have to kind of fill in numbers. with our biases our interests our 
intellect or logic, whatever. We get, we kind of got to paint by numbers with some of this because numbers we paint. only get what he's saying on his TikTok or whatever. Mm-hmm. We don't get her mm-hmm. her side, her voice, nothing. We don't get none of these seven women side. Mm-hmm. But you have your side, right? And and I'm with y'all. In the case that he took upon this contract, and these women said that I want a baby. I love you, dude, or I like you enough to, I would like to, if things go this route, I'm cool with it. I want to have a kid. I don't care. I ain't having no abortion. I'm anti-abortion. I'm anti-this. I don't believe in birth control. I'm not going to take a plan B. I don't believe, like, whatever that case may be, if they told him that, he went against that, and he still was like, well, I'm going to take the shot. When you... Uh-uh. But again, my logic started to kick in on number three. And when I hear a brother saying, this is my policy going in with women. Mm -hmm. And these seven women decided to, what I hear is a brother like myself who has had a lot of sexual experience, which means that you have laid out your You've been who you've been Mm -hmm. and you've laid this out and every time you laid this out, the women that you happen to been with said they cool with it. Mm -hmm. As a person who has been a victim of a woman who second guesses and then changes her mind, right? And has had to feel the fallout of it. Because unlike this brother, I've been on the end of I never want to have kids. I don't, I, I'm not ready for that. This is not what I'm on. I also don't want to use protection. How can we do this together? If, okay, we both clean. We've gotten that figured out. Great. We're on the same page. And then I have sex with you. And then I'm telling you, I don't want to have kids. And I'm letting you know this. And you're telling me I'm on birth control. And then you decide not to take your birth control that week. Now we have a child on the way. And then I'm now invested in said child, unlike this brother. But now you decide that now I do want to have an abortion. So now I got to live with the fact that you're taking the child away from me that I actually now want. So what I'm saying is when we look at this, what I'm hearing from this brother is not a dude that's like haphazardly entering into social contracts with people. It's I'm entering in with the same standard. This is my contract every time. These seven people broached or breached my contract. And now I because they breached said contract, I'm not upholding anything under this. Which now puts the <clears throat> onus back on the woman who there are women out here who say I want, I don't want this. I'm cool with this. And then when shit happens, oh, I changed my mind and you got to deal with it. No, bitch. That ain't fair either. Because if you had told me that there was a chance that you was going to do that, if you had to put a clause in this contract saying, yeah, I feel like this, but I'm not sure how I might feel when we get there. Then that lets me know, let me not stick my dick in you. Or I'm going to do so with the warning of you may change this agreement at said time of ejaculation. Shit may feel great enough to you where you say, you know what? I want this nigga to be my baby dad. Well, damn it. All right. At least I knew that it was a change. But you're telling me we are 100% on the same page and then you switch the contract up. That's a different conversation. And that's two different conversations that come from this clip. Like, you got the one conversation of him. Mm -hmm. I enter into this thing knowing that this thing could go fucked up and I keep doing it. Grant, 100% right. But you also look at, for me at least, I look at most sexual situations as transactions because you give up so much from both of them. Both the male and the female give up so much to make that happen in a healthy way, right? Because if one of them fucks up on their end, it becomes so unhealthy for the other, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, it it takes a lot. So, like, I look at that as, like, a transaction because it's just like you giving your life savings to somebody and they're 
doing the same with you and you trusting each other like, you ain't going to fuck up my bag, right? I'm going to still be able to retire, right? You know what I'm saying? And if this motherfucker fumbled their in, one of the other party is now fucked. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Going back to it. You got the end of the dude is, yeah, you keep entering these contracts knowing that it's the chance the person may breach. But that's what business is. That's what transactions are. So if he's so wrong because he lays his terms out and he's completely vulnerable and he says exactly what it is and then these women change their mind. Or is she wrong for the fact that oh, well, this is what it was and then I changed my mind and now this is and you got to live with that because I changed my mind and I'm the one that actually chooses whether or not the baby's born. See, that's the key. Like, if both parties could make the baby and then they both could, mm -hmm. like, like neither one had to carry the baby or neither one had complete control over whether or not the baby came to full term and cool. But the problem is there's an imbalance there. So when we talk about double standards, that's the double standard of women. They have the power to breach a social contract with any man at any time and then force him into a life that he may or may not have been ready to do. He may have laid out everything. They may have agreed to it. They may. You have women that have signed paperwork and still do this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, now that you said this, I kind of want to see the uh, clip again, even though I know I deleted the shit out. But now I want to see it from this angle. Because as, all right, no, I, I, feel you. I consider myself maybe less promiscuous as the average guy. So that's what? Hey, that nigga mad. <laughs> that nigga mad as hell. Man, like. That nigga mad <laughs> as fuck. That nigga mad as hell, boy. God damn. It ain't why we be responsible. <laughs> yeah. I got seven kids by seven baby. Yeah. No, 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 no. All right, all right, all right. That's the that's that's the he legality. Took accountability for that part, but this is the thing, though. Mm -hmm. There's several different pieces of this. There's the female accountability piece. There's the male accountability piece. There's the legality piece. Mm -hmm. Now he I has a legal right to have to take care of these kids. So these women that are putting them on child support are not crazy. Mm -hmm. But are they morally right is my question. I'm going to go. Well, oh, why are you find it back? Okay. Everybody I, I, ain't got morals, so. I was going to say, <laughs> I, just because I, I, I went in on him, that does not negate the fact that the baby mamas really are bad at decision making, especially the seventh one. But that's why I wanted to go here because I, I knew like my, my hope was that you guys would go in on him mm -hmm. so I could present the ultimate. Like I wanted to have that dichotomy of the viewer like literally like, yeah, you was thinking this, but what about this perspective? Because in you my head, I want I want to root I for the first couple of times, like, dude, you trip. It's you're wild. I want and to, then the I third want to time someone's sad, like, but it's like oh, well, you might be right. All right. Now, see, I have one question, but I think you about to ask it. So let's I, I'm, I'm gonna go back to before I used to be married, just because I don't know where I can go with it, right? But I'm gonna go here again. The reason I think I may understand his situation is because I've been where you have conversations with the woman and you are very clear with her of your intention as far as baby making, as far as what you are willing to do sexually, as far as what your intentions are sexually, as far as what your um, limitations are, as far as what you prefer, as far as protection, as far as uh, uh, what you call it. Uh, What you call it? The 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 
got them condoms and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, that the protection. All right. Perfect. So, so like you prophylactic. Okay. Rubber. Yeah. So you you you've been very clear, y'all are both. In the, and then I've been in this I've been in a situation where because the woman cares for you so much, or they feel as if this is an option to prevent. A decision by you in another part of your relationship, they will then go back on said contract that you've agreed upon. Mm. So we both on the same page going in. During the act, we're both on the same page. Immediately following the act, we're on the same page. But because we go in as Migos, but then you want to be offset. But because something happens between now and the time you figure out that. You whatever safeguards we use did not work. You are now going to use that as a part of your situation to make things work for you with us. Mm-hmm. And having been a victim of that, I understand how, and, and having been a victim on the negative end. Uh-huh. So I want the baby, and then you negate the baby because I am no longer interested. In you. Uh-huh. So I know what that feels like from his end to like have a clear understanding of what's about to happen, and then because of your flim flammy feelings throughout this, you use these things to become a prop. Uh-huh. Now that doesn't mean that's the act. I, I don't want women to get that confused. Most women don't do this. But these seven the might not do, be those. Them, like what I'm again, the first two times I heard what you and face heard, mm-hmm. a dude that's not taking accountability for his act. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem because a lot of dudes don't. A lot of dudes stick their dick in bitches raw without having any intentions. They act like they like these bitches. They act like they want to be bae. And then as soon as the bra come up, be like, hey, I'm pregnant. And they fall back like, oh, I didn't know. I don't want to. Eh, you ain't you ain't my. No, but uh-huh. you was telling her how much you cared about her, how much you want to. Like, no, we ain't about to do that. Don't lie. <clears throat> now, if every day you've talked to this girl, you told her, I don't want <clears throat> none of that. And she said, cool. I'm going to help you. We we both will make sure that none of that happens. And y'all have done so, and then it still happens. Then. And then she decides to go along with something different than what y'all planned, and that's what her. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm seeing from this brother. Like, the first two times I heard, you're a fucked up dude. And then the third time I realized what he's saying. I told every single woman, this is what I want. That tells me a man that's his, accountable his and understands who he is as a man what his intentions are, and he's very clear with the women that he chooses to sleep with. That his tone doesn't sound like he's trying to be an asshole. No, no. it sounds like he's trying to be very clear mm-hmm. and distinct. And for me, as an assertive black man, as a sigma male and, who doesn't and that's rely why on other people's feelings, I'm very clear on I understand his perspective. And that may be my body. And inside, inside, like when I first looked at this, I was like, I want to give this guy a break. But it's like that number is what popping in my head. It's a lot. But I also this is what I was going to say. But what if you fucked a lot of women? That, like that, I fucked a lot of women in my but life. But that's time. what I was saying to the fact that I got one child is amazing. Like I, I bet you know. Uh, I I would say I. No, I it's just one. All right, I might not. I'm also very cool with a lot of the women I fuck, so I'm I'm good. I'm, I think I'm good. Okay, I might. I'll say I may be a less <laughs> promiscuous as than y'all, all around. Yeah. So in my mind, and usually I'm a person with yourself. one person. Yeah, like I, I'm a person. I just deal with one person at a time because that's all my mind can keep. Right. Calculated my head. After a while, you you get past two or three, you know, it's like all right. And ma- the majority of the time, I'm like, all right, I'm looking at you. All right, we're all friends. Call it a day, right? So when usually when I'm looking at stuff like this, I'm trying to put myself in his position to understand what he's saying and see if he's 
in in the right. But now looking at it as a person, all right, numbers wise, if mm -hmm. and I mean with numbers, that's that's with any situation. Like if you if you a person that's hitting one hundred, the average is fifty. You know what I'm saying? There may be one or two or seven in that the, slip through the that slip through the cracks. And that's what I'm saying. Like when we talk about ratio, like so again, what I do know is this, and this is where my logic kicked in on the third one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you the three keys. And and I'm not the one to under I'm not the one to figure out and look at a guy and be like, yeah, that nigga fuck all the bitches. To me, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. One thing that nobody's talking about, nobody's speaking on, man. One, one key thing. What? What is it? This nigga pullout game is trash, man. <laughs> but mine's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Most niggas do. Like what? We, like what we talking about? Like, all right, like, we gonna we gonna get real. We gonna have a real a real pot. Hold. On. Let me let me let me let me let me stop. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. We're gonna have a real conversation. Mm -hmm. Most niggas pull out game is trash. Most niggas, if they in the pussy of their choosing, meaning the pussy that they actually wanted to get, pull out game trash. You wanna put, you wanna bust in that shit, even if you gonna oh, roll. Okay. So we ain't about to do this to that nigga. Like what we gonna say is this. This is what I will say is based on my logic, and these are the three things that I saw from him. I saw a dude that for one, is a cert. And again, these are all biases that I have because they relate to things that I hold mm -hmm. valuable or true as things that I pick, mm -hmm. right? So, he's a cert. Mm -hmm. Not aggressive. He doesn't mm -hmm. seem like the type that's like, you will do what I say. It's more like, yeah, he don't this is what seem I stand like on. the extra alpha dude. So, what yeah. I get is Sigma men. Mm -hmm. I get, this is what I stand on. Are you cool with it? If you are, then let's run. Mm -hmm. I get that most women that he runs into roll with that stigma. Like they cool with that. I get that seven of them women were like, no, I really like you. I'm gonna keep this baby. Mm -hmm. I get that as a person that stands on principles and values, he's like, but I said this, we agreed on this, I'm going to stand on our agreement as opposed to what you now feel because of whatever. And he's okay with stepping away from that emotional thing that happens when you realize a kid is on the way. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I couldn't be him. That That's the other thing. Because once you say it's another being that I help to create that's here. It's hard for me to disconnect. Like once you say it's a baby involved, I mean I'm all in. Yeah, he'll look. But I've also him. been on that end of we agreed to not have a baby in the first place. Mm -hmm. You was down, and you told me that this was your precaution, and then you negated on those precautions, and because of that, you then took away my ability to have a child. So I get that perspective of like you just didn't fulfill your end of this contract and now you fuck my shit up like so even though I wouldn't be the one that would step away from the kid I get him stepping away from the kid because at the end of the day it still boiled down to to me at what point do we stop Relying on emotion to guide our social constructs and rely on logic. Because to me, logic makes more sense. Like the emotion of things is more individual. How you feel is how you feel. But the greater good is the greater good, regardless of how either one of us feels. Like if the greater good is to make sure that we have enough wheat to make sure everybody can at least have a piece of bread before they go to bed tonight so they don't die. Then me having a feeling about the wheat production is my feeling. But I ain't got shit. To, that, that don't negate the greater good. It just means that that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And how I feel should never go against the greater good. So if the greater good is between me and you, we got this contract of, hey, we're going to do this, this, and this. 
And then you, at the end of the day, after we done signed the contract, the contract is printed. It's both of us got our copies that sign. It's in the safe. And now you decide, well, I don't want to do that no more. Hey, fuck you. I got to do this goddamn contract or suck my dick, bitch. If, if I... I say bitch because that's what a bitch do. They go back on contract, male or female. I, if I have to ignore my emotions for the greater good every fucking day, who the fuck are you that you think that you are above ignoring your own emotions for the greater good for everybody else? I do it, bitch. Why can't you? I do it without question, without any, like the emotion be there for five seconds and they'll be like, yeah, but I'm the only motherfuckers that's going to do it, so let me do it. Because if we don't, we end up all dead. Mm -hmm. Like, think about that. If we all just act off of what is best for us individually, you know how many people that is killed in road rage accident or killed in supermarket disagreements over who's in line first or, like, you realize how many people just act off of pure emotion with no regard to what's going to happen after. And then just <clears throat> multiply that. Like, when we talk about slippery slope arguments, a lot of times if it's, it's a fallacy. But in this case, it is a real thing because if if we all just say, fuck it, that's not a slippery slope. That's an honest to God, this world is going to be crazy. You know how many uh, illegitimate babies is really going to be then? When men just say, I'm just skeet. I ain't going to even let you know that I want to have a baby. I don't even care about you. Like, when women just say, oh, fuck it. I'm going to be a hoe. You know how many, like, crazy, we, you know how many crazy situations we run into? We are when currently people at just pull 8 up billion and be like, you know what? I'm going to eat this person's population. face because I felt like. Mm. You know how many, like, wild Purge. situations I held back just because of social etiquette and understanding and social contract of like, hey, I'm going to be a good person to you just because even though in this moment you might want to knock me the fuck out. That will probably make you feel the best, but is it a social man? We had an example of that earlier when I accidentally knocked over his beer and I apologize for no, that. I was just, I was just, I was just, I the spit on me the other week. I was going to add was that different. next. I, 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 I was going to add. Was, I was going to add that. That wasn't on a you thing again. That was, I, I acknowledge that was a me. I I'm not. I, I'm not adept to experiencing that. To have handled it in the best way. If that makes sense. Like I, that's not something that I've like experienced, dealt with, and then processed, and then I know how I'm gonna do that the next time. Nope. Just happened, and then it was whatever happened in the moment. That was the first time I dealt with it, but I think I did good. I was very honest. I was I was direct about my feelings, yet I did not act on said feelings, and I think that's the key, right there, right. I think that's the key that kills women in this situation. And I'm gonna play it again for Pat because he did ask for that. But then I'm gonna get to my point as soon as I'm done, and then I'm gonna let Pat and uh, update round out this topic. This place. Oh, I'm on the wrong page, man. Right. Yeah. To these children, and I offer to pay for the abortion. Majority of times, they'll either take the abortion or they'll take a plan B. But only these seven have kept these children. But the crazy thing about it is they want me to be responsible for some children I told them I did not want. So for some years now, some of them been trying to get in contact with me access denied because I, I don't really know why you're trying to get in contact with me i didn't told you i did not want them kids so don't expect me to be responsible financially emotional spiritually mentally or physically with some kids i i got seven kids and seven uh, uh, to the shade room uh -huh. for giving us this uh they are very good at finding uh Fuckery. Very much. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Pat, you've heard it again. Mm -hmm. I would say I, I, I. My only question is, 
Because it does sound like he is saying this before the act. You know what I'm saying? He, it does sound like he's a man that would have the conversation and would say this before the act. Now, I will say not every not every situation you're going to just end up in that conversation. That's not a conversation that you just like. Nigga, what? Now, I'm talking about like as not far every conversation you're going to end up in the conversation. No, like <clears throat> it's not a that's not a normal conversation you just go into when you like first meeting someone or something like that. And I'm thinking in situations where he's all right. What you mean? We're we're oh. talking. We're at the club. We no. meet some girl yeah, yes, and something like that. Yes, I'm a, I'm gonna negate that. Mm. Depending on who you are, it's not normal for some <clears throat> people. It is for some. If we've gotten to the point where we talking about fuck, oh, we talking about that because I need to know. Like, all right. So as a person, mm-hmm. let me be just clear. I, I I don't care how this come off or like whatever. Like, this is part of the conversation, and I think this is the problem. Like a lot of men. And women don't like want to have the real part of the conversation and just say what it is. Mm-hmm. I don't like the I don't like the use time. So when I first met the mother of my child, right? When we first had Anna for, she understood all of these things. Mm-hmm. She understood that the possibility of things could happen. And we discussed beforehand what precautions we were both willing to take. <clears throat> we both made some sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And then we went forward. But if we are grown people and we talking about sex, the fuck you mean we ain't having them conversations? So we just, so I'm just busting in you raw without saying nothing? I'm talking about You about just letting me, me bust in you raw without saying nothing? We ain't talking about what's going to happen afterwards. Now, I'm not speaking for myself. I'm just talking about what people uh, just but grasp. People talk about. We'll but when I'm, as far as me, if you want to talk about me, yes, I do have that conversation with that. And like I said, I'm maybe less promiscuous as y'all. And I, that's one of the main reasons why like you said, I don't like condoms either. There's always a weird situation when they, it, 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 you get into play. You're already in the mood, and then you got to put the condom. It, it, yeah, I know some people know how to do it in ways that's, nah, fuck that. I don't like condoms either. So being that I need to put it. Yeah, the, being that I don't, I am less promiscu- promiscuous than maybe the average guy because I'm that cautious. I, hey, i am be honest with you. I'm that scary. It's proven because I don't got no kids. <laughs> so, like, hey, and as you were saying, everybody in the world, except for me, uh, pull out gain is horrible because we're at 8 billion people, human population. So, like, at this point, I can't really say that. I, I can because I'm king pull out. Hey, man, look, but but that. that's only because my ratio is lower. If my ratio was higher, then I probably would have. Yeah. Hey man, I'm gonna tell you, this is what it comes down to as humans. Right? The beautiful part about being human is that we got free will. We are the only animal that has every other animal is just free breathing. They, they're very impulsive. Whatever they feel, they do, they go with it. The beauty of us is we have the ability to actually think about our choices before we make them and then act on them based off of that choice. If you live off of the contract you set, you're good. And that's in every situation, but it goes back to when we were talking about honesty a few weeks ago, right? Or a couple weeks ago, right? Like, the ability of you to have a best friend, it all boils down to you, the ability to be honest with that person. Because if I got to lie to you all the time, at some point, them lies going to catch up to me, and then you ain't going to want to be my best friend no more. Because now them lies going to start affecting you because you are in close proximity to them. Um, so, like, when you deal with people that are real people, right? And, and even in families, in relationships, in sexual in situations, like all of these situations, it all boils down to like trust. Like I got to be able to trust that whatever you said is what's going to happen because that's all human interaction is. My ability to understand you is my ability to understand the fact that you told me what your name was and your birthday was and the values that you believe in are actually the things that 
what you said are true. Like, if you're lying about all that, then what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you're a politician. So, basically. But, like, at the end of the day, like, it goes down to, like, when I look at a brother like that, I don't see a man like a lot of people see that maybe he's irresponsible. I see that like he's made social contracts with several different people and they negated on their age. And that's not him being a bad person. That's them people not doing what they said because the reason the, the, the reason that I go so hard for my son is because I said I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So whether it had been with the mother of my child or whether it had been with one of the many women I had sex with before then, I let them know that, like, hey, I don't want to do this, but I'm cool with this, 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 and this. And if this happens, I'm going to be there. Like, I, it was all laid out. So, mm-hmm. like, if at any point that my son had to been created, I wanted. So there was, there's nothing that's going to keep me from being there for. Him. But on the flip side, if I tell you I don't want this goddamn car or this time shit, or this Airbnb, and then we do something, right? And then you change your mind, and then all of a sudden I end up having to be responsible for this goddamn Airbnb or this car or this time. Nigga, what? The fuck you mean? I told you I ain't want this shit. Mm-hmm. We agreed upon me not having this shit. Now you're telling me I got to do this shit? But we agreed. We shook hands. We had a contract. We were together on this. This is not me saying what I want. We said we cool with me not having this. So why would you now make me and force me into a situation where I got to do it? That is breach of contract. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think social contracts should be treated as regular contracts. Like if me and you agree, like this is what we like. All right, me and you roommates. For people who don't know this out there, right? So if I say, hey, I'm cool with this, that, and the third. Pat say, I'm cool with this, that, and the third, too. But then, two weeks later, I come to Pat and say, you can't do this, that, and the third. Blah, blah. I'm fucking tripping. We agreed. We have a contract. We've agreed on this. Like, we both established that this is our norm. I can't just come back and just change that without, ha- without it being an agreement again. Like, yeah. it, that's another agreement that got to take place. It can't just be like, I'm just, hey, this is what it is. Fuck what you thought. Mm-hmm. No. We agreed. I got to make another agreement with you or we don't have an agreement. Mm-hmm. Then it's just me going about whatever I'm going to do. But that also means that I'm taking upon all responsibilities thereof. Mm-hmm. So if I say, hey, we roommates. I'm going to paint this wall back. And you said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. That don't sound I don't like really me because like I like black. black. I think black is a great idea for me. But, but I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah, you go I, ahead. <laughs> no, you, you wanted, you I, wanted uh, aquamarine, right? That's, that's but then the, the landlord didn't like black people, right? Mm-hmm. But you knew this. And you told me don't paint it black. Mm-hmm. But then I say anyway, I'm going to do it. And we didn't agree on it. The original agreement we had was we were going to keep the walls fucking white. Mm-hmm. That's what they were. We just were going to keep that. And I agree with you. I said, hey, we shake on this. This is what we're going to do. It's our social contract. We're going to just do this. If I go about and do some dumb shit and you didn't agree to that, you're not responsible for that shit when it, when it go wrong. When the landlord come and say, who owed it? Me. Yeah, he didn't want that. He, 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 he told me he didn't like it. He said, I don't want to do it, but I did. Uh-huh. But I just like it. That's how life should go. Social contracts should be held as contracts. Like, if, if, if you can't just switch some shit up on somebody once you agree. Now, if y'all ain't agree in the first place, or at the last and minute, you got pushed into the situation in the first place, and that's on the person to push you up. So if somebody, you know, S A you or they are you or they uh even just took advantage of you know like just kind of 
hey, you didn't realize what you were signing up for. There wasn't a clear understanding from both parties of what the contract even was. Who you are. The person that put you in that situation to be subject to all penalties thereof. But we ain't about to do this shit here. I think I'm also, I think I was also judgmental off of that for the simple fact that I also know how flip floppy women and decisions when they're feeling some type of way can be. And being that, they are like that. I am less promisc promiscuous because I know that can occur. So I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that drama. So I just avoid it altogether, it is it is which hinders me at the end because I want I that pussy. You have to even limit yourself from who you discuss things <clears throat> with adults. Again, we're talking about adults. You know, mm -hmm. We're not talking about children. We cannot uh, rationalize and make the most efficient rational decision. Mm -hmm. We're talking about adults who have completely developed frontal lobe and who are completely able to rationalize and make understood and um, conscious decisions about their actions. Their, right? So we're not about to do this. There's no reason you should have to limit yourself to deal with another adult when an adult should be able to just tell you what the fuck they want. No. And then live up to that. Like when we like oh, I don't know. When when I when I, I usually seven, see them, I peep what's going on, no, and I just leave that man, shit alone and go to the next. We talking about adults. Yeah, I was in seventh grade when I met. Him. My social contract with him was, hey, we we'll just be real with each other. Care what else happened <clears> outside of that? You know, you want to tell somebody you came and leave? That's on you. <laughs> that's <laughs> on them dumbass to believe it, but we know what's up. That shit has worked for uh, damn near 30 years. Mm -hmm. I met you. Our social contract was, hey, just be real with each other. You crazy, I'm crazy. You just different types of crazy. I'm a little off. Will you accept me? Yeah. Will I accept you? Cool. All right. Work for, again, and in 25 years. I might be a All I'm off. saying is, this shit ain't Rock is not. Mm -hmm. It's it's literally just living up to whatever contract you had, and then if some shit change, if I decide, hey, I'm hotel and woke, let me let you know. Yeah. Hey, now I believe this. Hey, I ain't cool with this. And that don't mean our original contract is null and void. It just means we've amended it, just like the Constitution. We just added a, a bill of rights to the shit, but it's still the same shit. Like we. Like, it, it's just an understanding. Humans deal well with understanding. We don't have it. We run them up. We go All crazy. All you got to do is tell a motherfucker who you are. Hey, today I'm this. Today I am pissed off. Like, earlier, we had a situation. Come help Pat out. We get back to the house. I'm giggling my ass off because the mother should have him and he pissed off. Pat snap. Oh, everybody just leave me the fuck alone. That's all I need. I just needed 15 but minutes. But guess what? He ain't lie about what was going on. He ain't give me some bullshit like, hey, I'm cool, and then treat me fucked up. Which confused. It was a social contract of, hey, I need everybody to leave me the fuck alone. Understood. <laughs> I, just, I just need it like But it's simple as that, but people minutes. make these things so crazy. Like, that's a social contract. It's literally that <clears throat> easy of just when we come on a podcast, sometimes face will come in and be like, hey, man, I'm tired today. Mm -hmm. Understood. Your energy might be low. Let me not judge you for that because you don't let me know what the contract is. It's my. It's up to me mm -hmm. to reschedule, or do I want to keep on going with knowing that you're tired? Mm -hmm. You giving me the information. It's the same thing with relationship. Hey, if I tell you that I'm a freak, and then this girl decide later on in the relationship, oh, I can't. But but I told you. You agreed and you said you liked it and you were fine with it, and that's what we were gonna do. You ain't had a problem now, with a put honey on change, your ass. You said contract. Let's talk. Ooh. But don't just change the contract without any discussion. Like all contracts start with a negotiation. You were talking there's that a, shit earlier. Take, there's a discussion had where both parties understand what's about to be in the contract before they sign. 
Like, I don't hand you a contract blindly and then expect you to understand what's in it. It's we've negotiated terms and then we both come up with paperwork that fits the terms that we've negotiated, but the negotiation is first. Rich niggas call it MDA. Oh, whatever the paperwork type is. You know what I'm saying? You got <laughs> all that shit. That's that LLC, LLCs, goddamn, uh, you know, royalty paperwork, you goddamn, all that shit. Saying that you don't got no part of it, it, my company and my shit because I gave you the connect. And guess what? I, I can't go back and then later because I don't like it. Give me this. You know what life is? Life is the, 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 the locks under bad boys contract. Bitch, you signed. I know you're mad about it. You may even get some, <laughs> your friend telling you that, yeah, you morally right, but you signed. Uh, Life ain't about morals. Morals are for you, and hopefully the people around you will, uh, will live up to them. That's a guidance for your life, your act. Morals and values are how you live and the principles that you stand on. They do not guide the next person. And when you enter into a contract with another person and they told you what they value the morals are, you, hey, man, everybody need to live up to that shit. If I told you I was a, a, a crazy motherfucker that might kill somebody, I need you to understand that that's what I am. And I need to then live up to that. I can't get mad at you for treating me like that. I need to live up to that. No, that's what I told you I was. You right. You right. And, I, and, and then I might need to catch a body just to make sure that you understand. That no, I understand. I no, you good. You good, bro. But, 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 but what we're not going to do is act like I'm something different. What I'm not going to do is then change up and then be like, oh, now it's time to be hotel, nigga. You hired me to be the hitman because you I told you this who I was. And now, no, nigga. God bless it, be beloved. You know, be brother. Just be We all together as one. You the bad. I can never take the life. No, I told you I was this. So then that's why you hired me. And now you done pay me this money. And we got this contract. And now I'm going to take your money. No, nigga. I be hot up when I bang white girls. Fuck this bullshit. I'm just they saying. They be into it. Like, I'm I'm done with this. Yeah. Be, be what you're saying. They, 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 they be thinking I'm Hebrew Israelite or some shit. Like, I'm not, no, nigga, I ain't like that. But yeah, if you into that shit, all right. All right. Okay. We might have to give it like uh his impact at the same time. So, <laughs> uh, how you feeling over there, face son, on this subject of seven and seven, 14 days? I feel that my brother was very poignant on the topic. And any shit that I can say that he ain't saying. <laughs> As usual. As usual. Very much so. Motherfuckers out here, men and women, both of y'all, be accountable for your own actions, man. On all the court. We got to do better out here. You know, we can't do better. We can't expect better. So. Indeed. You ain't never lied, my brother. And on that note, um, Kids and arguing fussed enough today. Um, hey, you got a topic? Oh, huh? did you have a topic this evening, my brother? Oh no. Okay. Well then, uh, I guess that's the end of the show, my guys. Hey, <laughs> um, did we have a black business this week? Oh no! <laughs> Ooh, everybody! Um, money, dollar sign partners one on Cash App or buymeprofit dot com backslash the partners. Uh, you can also, you know, give us some money. We want the supporters for four ninety nine a month on Spotify, and um, yeah, if they want to give us money and get some back, how they do that, babe? Go to the damn stuff. Go to the stove. The store's name and the address is rtreclothing.com. Once again, it's rtreclothing.com. That's A R T R E clothing.com. Gotcha. Thought I'll spell it for you. No, won't. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else?
if they want to get some or, you know, they want to talk to us about what they purchased, how can they do that, Pat? Well, on the bottom, you will see uh, usually right beside Twitter, uh, right there, right where the Instagram uh, symbol is. Uh, you'll see at T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. Let me say it loud. At sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. And that is the Twitter. That's the Instagram. You laugh. <laughs> I feel like I did something. What did I do? I just uh, got real aggressive out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Twitter. That's the Instagram. That's the Twitch. That's the that's the TikTok. And on Facebook, we're Tiz Face Pat on the podcast. Indeed, man. And uh, I I don't really know what else to say after that. But uh, we about this bit. Excellent one, ladies. <laughs> we about this thing, motherfuckers. It's been a great week, motherfuckers. We love y'all. One hundred. This episode was brought to you by the letter F.